We're live. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of Tower Power Hour. We have myself, Clint from Liberty Lockdown. We've got Nick. We've got Toad. We've got Jose. And tonight, a very special guest. Some say he's the biggest name in the libertarian podcasting. When he walks, the earth shakes beneath his feet. When he enters a room, the winds of change shift their direction. When he does stand up, they have to replace the stage because he wrecks the joint. He beat Archie in a sumo wrestling competition. The man who is undefeated in the political debate scene and at the buffet line. He is fat comic Dave Smith. <laughs> What's up, yeah. guys? What's up? <laughs> Thank you going? so much for being on our show, Fat Dave. It's an honor to You're meet welcome, you finally. Man. Amazing. You're one of my favorite Twitter accounts. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this for us, brother. Dude, I, I always look down on you peons and try to, you know, make your day just a little bit better by giving you, pr gracing you with my big ass presence. It's a You're, real you're honor truly to have a giant, you. sir. It's a real honor. Giant to Liberty Keith. But a real we heavyweight. Get started, before God, we get shut started, up. I think. <laughs> I think we should have another another guest because this show just isn't big enough, even with Fat Dave here. And we also have the Robin to Robbie's Batman, the man who interrupts the genius that is the fire, the reincarnation of Ron Paul, but upgraded with Tourette syndrome. He is comic Dave Smith. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this, uh, this whole thing would have been better if you just promoted it this way and it was just Fat Dave. <laughs> <laughs> And I wasn't here and just leave the audience fucking like, oh, seriously, man. What's up, everybody? It's uh, it's good to be here with my uh, my favorite group of uh, retarditarians. Rothtards, <laughs> Rothtards, uh, Rothtards. That's not bad. Let me let me go through the list. Uh, Toad, it's good to see. You. It was great to meet you at Porkfest, and I'm, I'm happy to be on the show. Uh, fucking Jose. We got a fucking. I got a little bit of a fucking bone to pick with you, but it's good to be here with you. I thought you were going to say a boner for him. Clint, of course, you're my brother. Nick, you are my king. Thank you. And you look better with the crown, to be completely honest. Man, come on. Fat Dave, fuck you, man. Fuck you, dude. You're not even fucking fat, dude. It was funny for like two days, man. And now it's like, all right. I just got this fucking account yet, with no, me with a so bloated funny. fat face <laughs> saying fucking wild shit. <laughs> oh, I, God, I, I actually think people have mistaken him for you at times. I oh, really 100%, think people one hundred percent. I get no I get follower I get followers and then I'll get like people messaging me and be like, Hey man, uh what's the music on your podcast? I'm like, <laughs> I, I really don't know. <laughs> Dude, did you see? I just did the fucking uh, Reason podcast, and it came out today. And the picture that Nick Gillespie, who I love, but this passive aggressive motherfucker, the picture that he chose for me looks like Fat Dave's. Like it must have been <laughs> after the worst hangover ever. My face is so goddamn bloated <laughs> in the picture. I bet like, so oh, many people on, be. Man. I've had so many people be like, dude, after seeing you, I can't look at Dave the same anymore. He just, he doesn't look normal. You just a fat <laughs> version. Look, it's a, it's a version. Well, thank you. Thank you for that You're contribution welcome. to my life. Is that I why thought, Dave looks emaciated every time I see him though? I thought the account was hilarious for like three days. And then by the fourth day, I was like, oh, you're gonna keep doing it? You're just gonna make an account. Like, this, is, this is just a thing you're gonna run with for now? Like, the sad thing is, is that Cole's actually really good at Twitter, but he just can't give up the ghost of the uh, Fat Dave moniker. I get it. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna end the grift. It's never gonna end, I can't. If I no, end I it now, I'm just can't be, on that. <laughs> just another retard libertarian number 1827 on Twitter. It's just, it's not going to be the same. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You gotta know, man, you don't, you don't have an organically crafted following. That's if we're, true. About, if we're on Who the does? subject of a picture that we're using for you for a show or that somebody else used for you for a show, why do you not have, why do you have that same picture from like 2015 with that little shit eaten grin that you have that's on every single thing that you're on? Why can't you get a new headshot, Dave? I mean, <laughs> I, listen, I'm certain that there's been thousands of pictures of me taken since then, but I just, at any, anytime anyone, even people I really respect, they'll be like, send me a headshot and I just don't. <laughs> 
I just like I just I don't know whatever it is my personality I just can't be bothered with this dumbass shit where I'm like I don't know go find a picture of me and that's always the one they find. The, uh, <laughs> yo, Clint, what was that guy's name? God damn it, I'm blanking on his name. But the photographer who was at uh, Freedom oh, yeah. Fest and he was at Pork Fest too. And dude, he sent me some of the pictures. He's been at like a million of these things. He's taking oh, like yeah. the best pictures and he sends them to me. And I, I showed them to my wife. Like, look at all these pictures of this guy. And he was like, oh, my. and she was like, oh my god, these pictures are so great. And blah. And I probably should send those out to people, but I just I don't I don't care. I don't know yeah. why you use that. Just, uh, that one Legion of Skanks uh, picture of you and Lewis and um, and Jay from like back in like 2012 or something like that, where you're you're like you look so young. That's the one you should always send out. That you're laying, sitting on the ground. That one be, would be hilarious. Yeah, I was a much younger, much more degenerate person <laughs> at the time. By the way, I love people. Uh, I, I saw people tweeting at me when I, I said I was doing this show, and they're like, oh, "You're really, whew, you're really taking your career in your hands this time." Like, are you, are you aware of the show I do twice a week? I mean, for years now, they've never listened. A fairly large audience. Yes. Uh, which is, I, I said, I told Toad uh, when, when I saw him at uh, Pork Fest that because I, I had seen an episode of this show. I don't remember which one it was. It was Jeremy know. Todd and Clint. Yes, yes, the, yeah. that's right. That it was, was called Eat and Suck Dicks. That was the title. <laughs> well, that's honestly, I had no idea it was a libertarian thing. I just saw Eat and Suck Dicks and I was like, all right, this seems right up my alley. Let's Try check to this tune out. In. And, uh, <laughs> And I go, wow, this is really is a mix between Legion of Skanks and part of the problem. Like, this is my shit. I should be on this. That's, and I, I was like, let me do the show. Oh, that makes me so yeah, happy that, to hear. Yeah, it was a great what compliment, a, man. Thank you. Dude, oh, yeah, whenever no, we yeah. were talking about it, like, whenever I wanted to start this thing, that was like what I was like, we need to do Legion of Skanks and fucking part of the problem because it's just, there's nothing like that. I mean, besides dude, the other two podcasts that. Yeah, like, I mean, but, besides pretty much my career, but yeah, sure. No, there's, there's a big opening. But your, your career's in the tank now since you're on this show. People might call you a racist now. Dude, think about this. What a hilarious thought this is right now that literally, and I'm not exaggerating at all, there are people watching this show, like, who we know exactly who they are, with a pen and pad out right now, time stamping. That's like, right. What are they going to say? What can I get Dave for? And like all this shit. And it's just my message to them would be twofold. Number one, you don't have to be you. Like you don't have to be this. You could just stop. There's no way this is fun. And uh, Number two, stop being such a faggot. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really shit. have a number two, but and I at just least number, <laughs> and number six million. <laughs> and at least and come with the heat. And number like, six million ish. And at least come with the heat. Like every time they get all butthurt, like we've had this happen a few times. There's been some more, like great outrage, and they never even come with the good shit. Like it'll be some like weak stuff, and you can tell they watched like ten minutes and they gave up. It's like if you if you just hang out a little bit a little longer, we said some wild shit and like. Like, it's, this isn't even fun. Like, we're not even, like, arguing about really offensive shit. Like, yeah, this is fun. Say hi to Mr. Ashley, you. you guys. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> Nick isn't even out of his house yet, and, he, and he's got homeless squatters in there already. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's uh, your dad, Nick? Hi. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm the original. <laughs> Are you the original king? I, he's I he's, said, he's he, the king. He's the prince. long as I'm around, I told him he can be the king with y'all, but as long as I'm around... He's just the prince, guys. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love everything about you right now. I don't know <laughs> what it is. I love I, your methy energy that you came right over. I love that you were just crowding behind Nick like you were about to rape him. We had no idea who you were. I'm glad to find out you're his father. I'm the pop, man. I'm going right. to let y'all have the show. It's good seeing y'all. Keep up the good work, guys. Good to oh, know that y'all are out here. Oh, yeah. I wonder sometime you, about the new generation, but when I see y'all, I know we okay. All uh, right. Oh, I, thank I, you. I appreciate that, sir. I'm gone. Shit. I had so many I'm questions about how Nick <laughs> ended up being the person he is, and now I get it completely. <laughs> like, like, Nick is actually the best he could have possibly turned out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's based as fuck, you guys. <laughs> but he was, was, was he basically got red pilled over the past couple months, correct? Thanks to me, baby. Yeah, that's right. There you go. I, I got him yeah. listening to Tom Woods and Scott Horton and, you know, the big guys. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm, uh... And a bit of mess, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, come on. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm guest up. hosting Tom Woods, by the way. I'm going to I'm gonna host oh. a Tom Woods show uh, that I'm doing it tomorrow, but it should be out in the next few days interviewing Jeff Dice. So check that out. Nice. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Seriously, though, my dad can't shave, like, very much because he's got severe neck problems, so he can't, like, look and turn his head to shave his, and stuff. So that's why he looks all scruffy like that. Hey, we're just well, what's your excuse? Stuff. No, I know. <laughs> my excuse is I, I have no chin or jawline, so I have to hide it. Yeah, same. Same. <laughs> Dave's Fucking like, I can't fucks. relate. I'm handsome. <laughs> yeah, <we are. laughs> no, it's, totally. Yeah, I get where you guys are coming from with that. It sounds like an awful I problem. I did want to uh, welcome you because this is this is actually the Archie Flowers um, gang podcast, and I wanted to ask you first of all, why are you a bastard? And <laughs> <laughs> dude, I fucking uh, so I I muted Archie Flower like a while ago, months. Was ago. it before or after you muted me? I, don't think I, I never <laughs> muted you. You're not. He just doesn't find you Holy funny. <laughs> That's no. like worse. Listen, I never, I never muted you. I look at every one of your tweets and decide whether or not I think I should retweet them. And the answer has always been no. So, <laughs> so I, I see all of them, and I'm just disappointed. No, I, have, oh, I didn't damn. mute you. I didn't mute you. Uh, but I, I did mute Archie and a bunch of the other guys after a while because I just, I mean, it's just after a while, it's just so boring. But you know how it is, like, when you mute someone on Twitter, like, fucking, you know, you'll see people respond to them, and it's like, do you want to view it? So every now and then, maybe, like, four or five days ago or something like that, I just saw a thing, and I was like, view. And I could already tell. I was like, I bet this is fucking Archie. And view. And I hadn't checked in on him in months. And I literally just viewed it and clicked on his account, and, like, the last five tweets were like, well, Dave Smith talked to Nick Fuentes, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, are you still doing this? I can't. How are you not bored? Like, are you honestly not just bored of this? Bored of this? And no one caring. Just saying the same thing over and over again. And no one gives a shit. And you're just still going on this fucking crusade. It's, dude, and let me, I'll tell you, because I did watch, I'm embarrassed to say it. But I did watch, I told you, Nick, that I watched that fucking Fake Retarians episode. You watched you it for me. On. You didn't watch it for oh, yeah. them. You watched it for <laughs> me and Josh. Everyone... You don't have to be embarrassed. It's okay. People were telling me, like, this was fucking, like, real epic. You got to go check it out. And I started it. I mean, I didn't watch, like, the first half with that yeah, guy the who first I didn't 50 believe minutes, yeah. was real. But he is real, evidently. Yeah. John Walton's yeah. Dude, watching it and, and watching it with you, like, it was fucking fascinating. And I don't mean, I, I told you this, Clint, when we hung out the other night, it was fascinating. Not even, forget all the fucking, like, political, like, you know, what your arguments are level. They're obviously not interesting on that level. But just on a psychological level, like, it was fucking amazing to watch these people and be like, they really exist. <laughs> like, this isn't, this isn't a joke. Like, they are, really are that. And to, to, to just see, like, every inch of it. Not just like how like awful what they choose to be is, but how incredibly dumb they are. Like I mean I mean like honestly, just like really, really not smart and yeah. how much they just don't get it. Like, dude, Nick, when you first came on the show, I, th I fucking forget who it is, but one of them goes to you. Like, you come on doing that goofy ass shit that you came on doing, which was hilarious, <laughs> which is just like, I'm, I'm being funny and disrespecting your show. Yeah. And, and they can't really be like, hey, stop, come on, take this seriously, because they got like cat freak over here and shit. <laughs> so they can't, they can't really be like, oh, this is a serious show. <laughs> like, let's discuss issues. And not. So uh, you come on and they don't even know what to do. Like, they're angry but they don't but they're kind of laughing but they kind of don't know how to handle it so one of them just goes to you like right at the beginning it goes where'd you get that crown burger king <laughs> and, like, Got him. it was the weirdest fucking moment where first of all you're like um yes that is exactly where he got but like i i just wonder okay so maybe maybe he couldn't see that the crown said burger king on it like fine but did he think he was going to, like, get you? Like, he was like, I know you think that's a really sweet crown. Let me just tell you that it's not even that nice. As far as crowns go, that's not even that nice of a crown. Like, you know you're not even a real monarch, dude. That was like a prince's crown at best. Yeah, like, uh, I was, have no idea. They didn't funny. get a joke at all, either. No, they the didn't know why I was dressed up like that. Did you get the thing, Dave? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, honestly, I didn't at first. And here's the thing. 
fucking Legion of Skanks, we did a whole fucking thing about Burger yep. King guy, but I didn't get it at first, but then I did remember like afterward what you were fucking doing. But I just thought it was so funny to fucking like just clown them like that. But but what was brilliant about it was really amazing was that it's not like you you came on just like look, I'm not taking this fucking seriously. Fuck all you guys with the perfect energy. And then Josh came on and was just fucking calling them all, calling them all nerds and shit. Faggots but, and retards. retards yeah. Yeah. Which is the way, this is the way to deal with people like that. The only, the, the, like, the, the technically correct way to deal with people like that. But then on top of that, I mean, as the episode goes on, I just don't, I, I don't see how any honest observer of that show wouldn't go like Nick and Josh were clearly the smartest people on that show. Like that, I know. not even, not even like there was a close competition. Like it was just like, like no one there had, has a thought in their head The the Brit dude just kept fucking yapping uh. and didn't understand <laughs> what the fuck he was saying. Like just knew nothing about anything. Then like was making our argument for us without no, yeah. their definition, their, their definition of populism. What was it? You go, well, what is populism to you? And he's like, lying. <laughs> lying, mate. That's what populism is. It's telling was... a lie. And I'm like, really? no, I don't I don't think that's what it means. And like, yeah. so it's just so interesting to go like, wow, these guys who talk so much confident shit don't know anything. Like the mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. basic thing. They don't they don't know any of it. And it was it was great. It was just fucking the best great. part, like yeah. just re regarding that, the bet, like in terms of their confidence of a, like a particular thing, was whenever they were so sure there are Holocaust deniers in the Mises carcass. There are literal Holocaust deniers. And me and Josh were sitting there like, name one, like, like, like I, I think I yeah. mentioned this on Josh's show, like Christopher Hitch is just like, name one, name one. And then Archie just goes, Dave Smith is a transphobe. And that was it. Like, they, they, I'm like, and you were so fucking sure that you had something and you just, just nothing. Come on. But, but Ar Archie is actually like, I think, I mean, oh, by the way, I don't even mean like, I, I don't even want to be shitty to him. It's just impossible not to. Cause like what, one of the things that that show made me realize was again, it's, it was fascinating on a psychological level and that's. Like, I don't mean like get serious here on this fucking show, but I remember I was talking to Jeremy about this when we were up at a uh, pork fest and I was telling him he shouldn't be fucking with that kid who he was talking shit to. And I wasn't coming at it from like an angle of like, you know, the retarded, like you're sexually harassing a minor or something, which is stupid. Like the idea that saying suck my dick is actually propositioning someone like yeah. it's not like it's like as if there's no difference between me being like suck my dick and being like hey why don't you come up to my hotel room and <laughs> suck my dick. Like, like obviously there's like that that's a, and and the idea that any 15 year old who's ever like played a video game with a headset or anything has never heard suck my dick or so i wasn't coming at it from that angle but i was coming at, at it from the angle where i think he was kind of like look these people deserve to be bullied and i i was like but who are you really like bullying here like this dude is no. I'm not telling you not to shit post top log stuff. Don't you fucking talk to me like that. You get back to drawing, okay? You get back in my basement and draw more pictures of me, top log stuff. But no, but I'm I am saying Jesus like, Christ. This oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, maybe I am Jesus. <laughs> but but like, I I go. Who do you think this fucking kid really is? I go. Do you not think this is a kid with some serious psychological problems? Because it seems pretty obvious to me. That's what it is. So do you really want to be bullying like a kid with psychological issues? Like maybe just fucking pass on that. And the thing to me, like that, that was, you know, I'm seeing there is in that show, you're like, God damn, like who are these fucking people? These are some real troubled fucking people who have real, like Archie flower. I mean, I don't mean this to be a dick, but it'll come off that way. But like honest question to the five of you guys, do you think he's ever had sex? <laughs> <laughs> That's not like what I thought you were about RG to say. Flower in cell. <laughs> do you? No, I'm just saying. Do you think? Do you think he's ever once? What well, I like that Neil Connor Hoover thing. I think, Zero I pussy think, and what it does to a motherfucker. Dude, it's not dude, good, dude. dude listen, I, I this he, is a guy. I think he titty fucked uh, look, Waldenberger at some point. <laughs> 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 no, no, I don't he's consider that gay. sex. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going on a real. I don't care if he's gay or straight or what. I'm saying, do you think his dick has ever been inside four walls? Is That's what I'm saying. Do you think it's ever? Human. Yes. Four I, I don't walls. think so. Like, like a room? 
probably. I, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm saying this is a dude who is quite probably never had sex with anything, is what, in his 50s? How, is that have, how old he is? I, I can't tell how old he is. He, he, could be in his, he could be in his late 20s or his early 60s. I have no clue. He's point. like, okay, listen, he's either, he's either 17 or 92. But my point is that he's, he's literally he's an Christ. old fucking guy who's like, never had sex, doesn't have kids, isn't married, and is hanging out with like 20 something year old losers. Like the biggest fucking losers <laughs> who are literally like six generations younger than him. And it just, it, it gave me like almost like a different perspective on it. And even on that show, he just sits there and shuts the fuck up the whole time. Yes. <laughs> and then comes in, comes in with one dumbass thing. Like after an hour, he goes, well, why are you an asshole? Like he's, <laughs> why are he's you an edgelord on, troll? <laughs> he's been working on that question the whole time. And you're like... God, he's got damn, he's got a dude. pretty fire background, and and he also uh, when he did finally have something to say, he forgot to unmute himself. <laughs> so yeah. go <laughs> was, he was hollering. He was like, "Shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> like, shut up!" And well, he was but, muted. There was also part of it where he was just uh, typing gosh. shit because he like wasn't gonna speak, I guess, and he was just typing yeah. shit and he had it behind him. Did you like, see that? Even, yeah, dude, dude so you're, you're 100. You're 100 correct though. Like, I literally after watching that tweeted out. Like the real divide in libertarianism, libertarianism is those that get pussy and those that don't. Like, <laughs> there's something to that. Like most of the guys on this fuck and here are married. I haven't been married for ten years. I have yeah. two kids. You're married with kids. Uh, Clint gets pussy in the rag. Uh, Toad, I think, is a is a vol cell or whatever the fuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Fat Dave and Nick both married. Like there's there's a huge there's a huge difference between the two groups. You know, like that. I mean, pussy class theory, whatever you want to call it. Like. Well, there's, no, it's just that y'all are paleo. We're, we're all paleos. That's the problem. Well, it's, right. Like but our weird group of uh, fucking, I think I called them to, uh, I think I was talking to Michael Heiss. I said, uh, I go, when I was at Freedom Fest, I was like, I don't know. It's a lot of Republicans. I wish I had my crowd of paleo degenerates here. <laughs> <laughs> we are like, however you describe us, none of it really makes sense. But I do think you're right, man. Like there is something to be said for that divide. Like that, that kind of like, Look, man, there are some really fucking not even not even socially awkward, like fucking like mentally fucking awkward people Retarded. who are. Yeah, who are, you know, I mean, like I, whatever yeah. the exact correct word is to call them who are really like stuck on this thing. And it's weird because even from like my perspective, like you see them on dude that that fucking archie guy and i'll i'll stop talking about him because i really shouldn't <laughs> anymore but he is so like if you saw his debate with me which i never should have done that is all my yeah. fault i take full responsibility yeah. for that i should <laughs> not have yeah. debated him no seriously Loves, i no lo we're laughing at love no, like, <laughs> that's get, called <laughs> communism it might that might be the best thing we could that's do. A remedy. Remedy. But, but, <laughs> It's that was my fault and I should not have debated him. And I knew from like the first three sentences he spoke that I was like, this shouldn't be happening right now. Oh, like no. this is going to go so bad for him. And he was not prepared for the moment and to handle it afterward. But guys like that, like he if, if you watch his debate with me, it's not that yeah. like. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't name a single rap album. They couldn't name one. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Nick, you, you, uh, you picked you picked Illmatic, correct? Yes, that, sir. That is an excellent answer. It damn excellent right answer. it is. That's the best rap album ever. That's from the uh, the number one wigger himself. I'll tell. Oh, how well, dare I'll you? And and a fucking <laughs> Brooklyn a Brooklyn uh, wigger. But I'll <laughs> I'd say, fuck, Illmatic might be the best. Uh, reasonable doubt, ready to oh, yeah. die. There's some really good fucking like New York hip hop albums. Don't Wear Die by AC, very underrated. There you go. <laughs> 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 but any, anyway, so oh sorry, let me just but, but yeah. say this. But like, the, like the thing is, like, if you watch, like, I've watched a lot of debates on on online and stuff, and I'm sure all you guys have too. I would challenge you to find more of a fucking blowout. <laughs> than me versus Archie. Like, I, I don't think there's Andy ever Craig. been ever been a debate where you're like the other guy debating. I mean, he lost the debate in his first three sentences without me saying a word. He just yeah. lost it. Like, he didn't even understand. He couldn't even wrap his head around the point he was trying to make. He just, there, there was a certain point like where he's like arguing that racism violates the non-aggression principle because it 
dehumanizes people and makes them less than human. And I go to him, well, what about racism that doesn't make someone less than human? And he goes, right. well, that's, that's an interesting question. Like, he, didn't, he didn't think through that possibility that someone might point out that. Like, he didn't even think through that. So it was he, just the worst debater you could ever imagine. And he loves to debate on Twitter. <laughs> All he tries to do every day is debate someone else and he just loses and loses and loses. He's, like, Dude, he's getting you... his case together, Dave. He's going to oh get the God. case together. He's going like, to bring you, it towards you. You beat him so bad it made you look like an asshole for being there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you were actually trying to be nice. <laughs> Dude, not even, not even made me look like an asshole. I was an asshole for being there. Like, I should not have been there. It should have been like, like, none of you guys should have been there. No, it should be someone like, I don't know, like, six levels lower like than anyone you know like, <laughs> one <of your> daughters. <laughs> well, nick, nick can completely out debate him even if he's 14 beers in which i was is gonna say dude, show, i was so. i was at least a dozen beers deep whenever we were talking about the yes. populism thing i was like the, and so looking back at that it's like wow they really uh, are not smart at all to be intellectually dwarfed by somebody who was hammered and didn't even remember yeah. it at that point yeah the and thing what, about, what i was going to say earlier i'm sorry jose because i know you had you, you haven't even spoken at all but no, it's fine. the one thing i want to say about archie is there is there is someone in him that is sort of cool because he laughed at my joke the where i joke? said yeah where i said he's i told him i said he is more libertarian than nick fuentes because he's gay and he he actually laughed at that like a really good Dude. laugh do you remember? Yeah. Listen, no, listen, Nick. You're you're completely correct, and you're really on to something there. I don't know if you guys remember when I debated him. Not only did he laugh at some of like the racist jokes I was making. Yeah. By the way, for yeah. people who remember, me and him were completely cool. It wasn't until yeah. after the debate and the fallout that he became who he fucking is now. So like, it's he's <laughs> here's here's the important thing to fucking remember. Okay, Archie laughed at my fellow travelers joke mm -hmm. at the end of yeah. the fucking episode. I went, hey, dude, I know we fucking disagreed on this issue, but I still consider you a fellow traveler. And he let like he put his head down laughing. <laughs> he thought it was hilarious. He got the reference. He knew exactly what I was talking about. And he laughed at it. What happened is that Archie, who was a complete unknown after that debate, started getting fucking like I made him libertarian famous. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And like in yeah. the worst yeah. way possible. Infamous. And so he's yeah. getting fucking hate all the time. And this is what really happened. And I saw this happening, right? Is that actually the loser brigade, they were getting on him. And they went, dude, why were you laughing with Dave about all really? of this fucking shit? Yes, they wow. were criticizing him. And then he went, well, listen, who can I go with? Well, I can't go with them because they all think I'm a fucking joke. So I'll go over here with them and double down and double down. Well, I just found out that Dave did a podcast with Nick Fuentes and now I'm building a case and all of this goofy, like embarrassing shit. But that's what happened. But you're right, Nick. Inside, there really is a dude there somewhere. Not a very <laughs> bright dude, but like a dude, you know, and like that he did laugh at is your pussy. shit. <laughs> well, well I, I think he does get pussy because he surrounds himself with a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking Hudak. You heard it here first. <laughs> Oh, no. He's giving out butt pussy. Let's be real. <laughs> it's it's called pussy. Well, maybe. <laughs> I, but honestly, I hope so. I hope, I he hope is. so, too. I think, I think this is actually a really good analysis of the entirety of cancel culture is that it's largely people that can't find a peer group unless they are, you know, mm. using otherization where, like, we hate these people. So the fact that none of us fuck, we could all kick it, you know, like... <laughs> I, I honestly, I honestly think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so God bless their hearts, man. I just hope you guys get pussy. I, I, if I was them, I would just the the only thing I would care about is legalizing prostitution. Oh, dude, I, I had a, I, I had a tweet the other day that was like libertarians are only so pro prostitute or so pro sex work because it's the only way they'll ever get laid. Yeah. <laughs> the only By the way, world is free pussy. Okay, I, I'm I'm all for that, and I think there might actually be a real benefit for. I, I mean, I'm being completely serious now. I think there's a real benefit for for that type of people, like the old school kind of your dad brings you to a brothel type thing. I think a lot of those guys could benefit from that. And by the way, to all those guys archie himself included you're still muted i'm not going to respond to anything you have to say about this episode but go ahead tweet away. I, w I won't see it i don't care hey, you know, hey well, shout out to the fakertarians if any of y'all want to fuck 
I am doing a road trip and I will drop you off at the local brothel and I will buy you a hooker. Straight up. Wow. I will jerk you off. Look at that. That's an yeah. I'm a DM and away. Can, I'm a DM away. You can <laughs> take that to the bank from the richest homeless person in America. <laughs> Liberty Clint. Yeah. Clint was like, hey, if any of you wants to fuck, I'm available. I just I just wish that Legion Skanks did pick uh, Clint for the... Um, how oh, was it? The most baller skank. That the most amazing. baller skank, and then they're like, show up to his house, and they're just like, "Who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out of here!" Like, <laughs> I said, like you can't come into my house. I like that Clint entered that contest and then sold his house two yeah, days so later. Sorry. Like, or, like no, no, just... no. Lewis, Lewis mentioned that shit like two and a half months prior, so I sent the video in right away. Mm, so that's why I, I, I moved out. Anyways, <laughs> what's your bone to pick with Jose? Let's focus on Jose a little bit here because yeah. he hasn't spoken a lick. Oh, yeah. Fucking Jose said, because you said, motherfucker, I'm coming on don't your take podcast. It, don't, take anything anything here, serious, I, uh, don't take anything I say seriously, first off. Well, that is, oh, damn it. That is, <laughs> a, that, is a, that is a great way to disarm me. That's what I fucking love. I really like that about, about Jose. I've watched a couple of your shows where you're like, look, I'm a fucking retard, but this is what's going on. And you're like, oh, I can't even be angry at you. No, because you fucking said, here, I'm just airing out all my beefs on this fucking dumb show. Because you said, I saw a thing that you did where you said that I didn't fucking really address the arguments that fucking uh, mm -hmm. Matt and Vin you said, made. You and said it's, it on it's here. It's a shame. Right, be, be honest, yeah, it was on honest. this show. It was it was a shame that I just took personal shots at them and didn't Did address their actual arguments. <laughs> you're like, oh, fuck yourself, no, dude. What were their actual arguments? Right, no, 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 no. I was no, 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 Jose. No, 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 no. Don't, no, 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 me. No, 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 you. No, 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 you. You tell me right now. What was the actual <laughs> argument that I didn't address? Well, it depends. If we're talking Maddie or we're talking Cyprian. Because Cyprian came at you wrong. Both. Okay, uh, Cyprian's bullshit. Both of them. No, both of them. Listen, okay. run this through the Stefan Molyneux fucking test, okay? <laughs> Who? Wh what was not an argument? Not an assertion. Not the Libertarian yeah, Party will Somebody... be evil <laughs> because... The outsider party is always evil, like the commies or the this. And I know, listen, I, I heard, I haven't seen it, but I heard Cyprian like wave the white flag and made an apology video or whatever. But what are the arguments that I didn't address? Just give Dave, me the argument. Dave, prove that you're not a predator. <laughs> yeah. Is that the argument? I'm, you, I'm a fucking narcissistic predator Did because I once today? said that it's not a 0% chance. <laughs> Right. That makes me a narcissistic predator. All right, All right. No, Jose, with, Jose wants an, to go. with the narcissistic predator thing, that was really retarded word choice. But – and it was kind of bullshit that he walked it back later being like it's descriptive because he's a smart guy. He knows what words he's using, and that's kind of the way I saw it. But I get how you can be like, well, it's descriptive. So technically, and that's why I really caveat that like, no. Cyprian so what's – hold on, hold on, hold on. So uh, what's the uh, argument that it's descriptive? To address, like, 12 things. But what's huh? the argument that it's descriptive? That's still, uh, even if it's descriptive, well, how am I a narcissistic okay, predator? All right, the narcissistic thing, okay. We can you deny that? that? The, pre the predator part, <laughs> I can get how he could say. The predator part. If, if, he's saying, <laughs> if he thinks that your tactics will not work out in the end, he's saying that in a sense you're preying on them. Whether there's intentionality or not behind that, that's a different story. I think it was insanely poor word choice and he knew what he was doing, but I could get how someone could be like, well, it's descriptive. That's why I was super like caveated that like Cyprian was no, like no, no. he if, came in there with a bone to pick. He legit. If did. my if my tactics are wrong, that wouldn't make me a predator. That would make me wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Like I, I mean, <laughs> it, it wouldn't mean that. That's not you praying. Like if you're trying to save someone and you say, "Hey, we should run through this door." instead of this door. But this door actually leads to certain death, and that door is actually safety. That doesn't make you a predator to run through that door. That would just make you wrong. So like, what's the argument that I'm a predator? The argument would have to be that I'm trying in some way to fucking kill the people that, that I'm like trying to bring on board. So I'm just saying, what's the argument that, that's not like well, just I'm, as a I'm, description. I'm, like, I'm first good very clear. I'm, I think he made horrible word choices. I think he was trying to say, in effect, but he's smart enough to know the word choices he's making and that those aren't mm -hmm. the improper ones. I want to be extremely clear. I'm not at all. And he did apologize later. I think Cyprian was wrong. He shouldn't have fucking came at you like Cyprian. that. I said that from the beginning. <laughs> do, we, do we have to seriously <laughs> call a grown man Cyprian? Please. Vin, no. Vin <laughs> And I'm, I'm the narcissist. I mean, it's the second fake name. Yes, but, it's fucking retarded. I will totally. Get, I was actually when I was talking that I was talking to uh, Maddie and I was speaking in reference to him. I think Vin. Um, it's actually really good that he did apologize. It was a very good apology. 
Uh, I, think I, I didn't see it, so yeah, I'll, so I'll agree. By the way, I don't have anything against him. Yeah. I just, so to fucking uh, Vin, I won't call you Cypherius or whatever your name is. <laughs> I will to to Vin. I will say no hard feelings between me. I heard you apologize. I haven't seen it, but I don't care. I honestly water under the bridge. I wish you and your like. As far as I know, he's a fucking father and a husband and a family guy. I respect that shit way more than any of this political shit. I wish him and his family the best of fucking luck. I don't care, but. The idea that, like, look, th this is the thing, right? Like, I felt like those guys had no arguments, at least in the show with Clint that I saw. I heard nothing. And I felt like I addressed, like, I, I felt like I told you exactly how to view those guys so that you could see through all their bullshit. And then Pete was like, well, let me play devil's advocate and throw everything at you. And I addressed every single thing that he fucking threw at me. And so then when you were like, like, I'm not actually mad, but I'm just saying like, when you were like, well, you didn't address the argument. I'm like, well, what argument? What, what <laughs> argument did I not address? What, what would first you like off, to hear? Dave I, I don't even remember. First off, I don't remember what the fuck I said. I, I said, to be honest, I, I forget day to day. Yeah, but I was high when I said I will, that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but uh, <laughs> fucking in, in relation to Maddie, I do think, and I actually did say a lot of what you just said there. I actually told him he was way too fucking woo woo him and fucking Vin both. They talk in these airy fairy retarded fucking ways that like, it's like, if you could just like, <laughs> if you watch my episode with Maddie, he was actually much more down to earth. He was very like, talk like a normal person. I even pointed this out to him that like, that's not a constructive way to go. But I did say that Maddie was being kind of conciliatory. So I did get the vibe that you were kind of coming at Maddie a little bit, but I think it's because he kind of got lumped in with Vin. And I yeah, think Maddie was actually trying to be conciliatory to his best No, because he's, he's, extent. He's as much a piece of shit as Vin, just more of a fucking <laughs> coward. Just more of a oh, coward. Listen, I'm not. Listen, in here, I man. am not trying to fucking pick a fight with Jason Stapleton's assistant. I think he does a great job <laughs> at, at assisting Jason Big words coming Jason from Robbie Stapleton. the Fire Bernstein's assistant. So, Jeez. Yeah, re, well, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you stole my joke. I've been waiting to say that joke. Oh, I'm listen. sorry, Cole. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I fucked listen, you up. I think he does a great job. I'm sure that he's a smart guy and I'm sure that he's a good father and I'm sure that he gets Jason's dry cleaning delivered on time. But <laughs> the point is that he said, right, which he said to you that I'm not willing to have this conversation anymore. It's always just these assertions about what they know about reality. I'm not willing to have these conversations anymore because I'm already in running for president mode and I'm not in the mode of having debates anymore. That's why I'm on this show right now because I'm in running for president <laughs> mode. Right. I'm not willing that's why you say to fucking on risk any case. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm not willing to risk anything. But here's why he's such a fucking lying cunt is that after his show on fucking, after his episode on Pete's show, I fucking reached out to him and said, hey, dude, like, that was an interesting show. I disagree with a lot of what you're saying, but I, I, I like the way your mind works. And I appreciate that. And he apologized you, to me. He goes, listen, dude, I'm sorry if I've been too sharp with the criticism and, and whatever. You know, I apologize for that. You had a big influence on me. And I go, dude, don't fucking worry about the criticism. I don't, I don't care. You, we all got to tell the truth as we see it. And all, we're all grownups here. So whatever. No problem. And he goes, listen, would you be down to have a conversation with me and like fucking, you know, talk about some of this stuff? And I go, I'd love to. And then he went on Clint's show and when fucking uh, Cypherion is like, oh, he's a fucking narcissistic predator, he goes, yeah, you know, I agree with that. And I'll tell you, I want to give Dave the benefit of the doubt. So maybe he doesn't mean to be a predator, but his behavior is predatory. So I would have to say that he is. A so then I was like, OK, well, fuck him. And then he's going to tell you that, like, well, I just don't want to have I'm not willing to have these conversations with him. It's like, no, you fucking lying motherfucker. You know damn well that I was down to have this conversation with you. But after if you're going to fucking go at me like that, like, why? I don't know, dude. Like, why should I? Like, why? It, it's a weird fucking thing where it's like this this whole thing, right? Like, it, it's an interesting game. And I kind of I'll tell you, there is a part of me that, like, gets off on it in, in a weird way. Like, like I jerk off to this yeah, that's, stuff. That's pretty I, gay. Uh, <laughs> no, say, it's please, whatever. Uh, it's, you're it's you're the same as, um, oh, what's his fucking name? Uh, the guy in New Hampshire. Um, Every time Cole goes LP. to make a point, he forgets what the fuck <laughs> he's going to say. <laughs> Every time. time. Jeremy on, Hoffman? Man. Well, look, Hoffman? think about no. it like this, right? If the former I go, LP chair. Yeah. JB well, Hitchman? Look, I, I go like this, right? Joe Bishop you're thinking Sarwak is what you're thinking, right? Sarwak, who goes on I Twitter go like and gets this. roasted every day. Well, think about this, right? Sarwak, right? That's a good example, right? 
He thought, and understandably so, when he went to debate me, he goes, well, look, I'm the chairman of the Libertarian Party, and this is some comedian. So he fucking underestimated me, uh, underestimated me and who I was, and he was like, I'll go fucking debate this guy. And he went from being the longest-serving chair of the Libertarian Party to being the noted laughingstock of the yeah. fucking liber liberty movement. Because when you do these debates, and I love this shit, you take your career in your hands. Like, uh, imagine for a second, like, people don't think about it because, like, I smash all these guys when I debate them. Like, I s fucking smashed Ar Archie and, and, and fucking Andy Craig and Sarwalk and Hudak yeah. and all these guys. But imagine for a second one of them had smashed me. Wow. What happens to my career Case after that? I mean, my part whole of the problem. Thing, like, dude, guys, listen to me. Trust me. My whole thing falls apart if one of those guys had just smashed me. So there's something exciting about that, right? Like you go like into these things like I'm fucking everything. The way I support my family is on the line right now against yeah. these guys. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to me, it's like I take this shit really, really seriously. And for him to come at me like that, he's like, yo, I'm trying to ruin what you do. Like the way you support your family, I'm trying to ruin. I'm trying to tell your people that you're a fucking narcissistic predator who's lying to all of them. So I'm like, okay, fine. But now every time you ever tweet anything, you will be mocked ruthlessly <laughs> by everyone who sees through your shit. So like, I'm all for it, come at me. But if you come at me in that way, and not just like, hey, I wanna have a conversation, not like some people like Eric Brakey or Tho Bishop come at me like, hey, I think the Republican Party is better than the Libertarian Party. We could have a conversation and whoever you thought won, whatever, we're all, we all respect each other. But if you come at me like that, great, please come at me. But then I'm coming to ruin you. Like that's mm -hmm. that, that like you're trying to ruin me, so I'm trying to ruin you back. And so, so here's the yeah. here's the thing here's the thing about calling you a predator too. The the implication there, you would have to you would have to say that every third party candidate that has ever run in America is also a predator because no third party candidate has a chance of winning. But everybody that runs in politics at least pretends to some extent that they have a chance. And 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 you don't even seem to pretend. I mean, and the thing that really pisses me off is that I don't know a single libertarian that thinks that you're going to be the next president. We support you because of your yeah. message. We support oh, you because we love what you do. I've been found so, out. <laughs> I mean, that's, I've, I've seen a few, but it is the vast minority. I'll, uh, well, but look, I get what you're saying. You've seen it's a few? Well, I'm just like also, thinking of Joe Jorgensen as a predator. Well, but the best... The best uh, <laughs> I've the heard best, she gets wild. <laughs> I read that fucking news she, article Joe, about listen, her. Listen, I'll say it right now. Joe Jorgensen raped that bat. Okay, she <laughs> was, that, that did not want anything to do Damn. with George Jorgensen. Uh, but like, uh, to what you said was, and you go, so is Ron Paul a predator? And they're like, no, 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 he's different because he's the guy who woke up both of them. So they exactly. can't throw him under the bus because that would kind of defeat their whole argument. And then their their justification or whatever was like, well, he was saying different things, and Dave is just saying the same old thing. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, what? I guess. I guess I'm saying the same old thing as Ron Paul. I mean, in a more fucking degenerate fucking way, but and the fucking I, Fed. But <laughs> the yeah, the Fed but, is retarded. <laughs> right. The Fed is gay. <laughs> but if you were, if you were like, say, in the Mises Institute, then Ron Paul wasn't saying anything new. You know, like he was just kind of saying the same shit that a lot of fucking hardcore Austrian libertarians had heard before. But the point is he was saying it to people who had never heard that before. So that's the same thing I'm doing. It's like, yeah, okay, to you guys, it might not be anything new. I mean, maybe a little something new because it's about, you know, the current day rather than 2008 or 2012. But like that, that is the difference between being like a fucking predator or not. Like, I don't know. Anyway, to those guys, I, I really don't have anything against those guys. I do think their shit is, is complete bullshit, and it's disappointing to me that uh, people in our space, particularly in, like, my camp, actually think there's anything impressive about either of those two. Oh, like, shit. To me, well, yeah. to me, it's like, the, that's like, they're like some very rudimentary, like, con artist shit. Like, just these claims that they know what's going to happen in the future, and they're wrong about it constantly. Like, just constantly mm. wrong. What is it? Someone sent me the other day screenshots where Matt's like, Trump will be inaugurated or whatever. Like, <laughs> well, I don't fucking know what they're talking. And, and at least, like, 
I, I understand, like, I, like, you know, speak above my pay grade, too, I'm sure. But I don't claim to have this level of fucking certainty about what the future will hold or we are in the forthcoming chapter and that's why this will be this way in the future. Shut the fuck up. I understand you read The Art of War six months ago and now you feel like you know everything, <laughs> but you really fucking don't. Like, you're not fucking smart. You're, you're, they're literally only one level... All right, fine. Four <laughs> levels above Archie Flower. Like, they really are. Like, the same way when Archie was, like, trying to go, like, um, you know, the non-aggression principle is violated by racism. That, that, like, dumbass argument he was trying to make. Where you go, hey, Archie, if you're right about this, then you are up there with the greatest philosophers who have ever lived. Like, if you're right about this, then you're the yeah. next great libertarian philosopher. But, what do you mean if? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the problem is that you have a sub-average IQ. Like, you're not even, Jesus like, like you're, you're not even, like, like a, a, you're not even a, a bright guy by normal people's standards, let alone smarter than Rothbard and Hayek and Hoppe and fucking all these guys, right? So, you're like, you're not... And, but you're trying to be this. And why is there a buffalo foundation? It's a fucking jack, you piece of shit. <laughs> they talk about it on Legion of Skanks. Okay, listen. It's a jack. Now, could you shove it up your butt? Sure. If you really, if you were in a pinch, yeah, sure. I think the solution here is for uh, Vin or Cyprian to become a gay gigolo again and fuck Archie, and then that would solve no, many problems. No, obviously the answer is so Vin and Matt go on Fakertarians. Oh, oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Love that. That'd be pretty awesome, actually. That'd be amazing, actually. <laughs> I want, I want to hear them how... argue about if taxes aren't bad, just make more money. That's, that was yeah. still my favorite <laughs> fucking... By the way, it's not that even that whole dumb thing, it, it's so annoying because it becomes this fucking like almost like argument that they're trying to go well no but like yeah really life is better if you make more money like i know no, no one was ever arguing that it's better to be poor than <laughs> than have money like yeah obviously the point is that the shit we talk about the liberty shit that is not at all an answer to it of course listen i fucking i like recommend to everyone try to be as successful as you can by the way Far more important than that to me is fucking find the right fucking person and marry them and have some kids. Like, you know, I know like uh, Jason Stapleton went in this whole like direction of like wealth, power and influence. And I don't hate him at all for doing that. I, that that's fine. And I don't hate mm. anyone. I don't hate agorists or Liberty Republicans or any oh. of those people. Like, I, you know, wait, there's someone in here that's well, yeah. an agorist? Well, I was, <laughs> I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say all, all Matt really is right now is an assistant to somebody who ditched his entire family. So, oh, we'll <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to even like talk about that shit because I don't know, uh, I don't know what the story there is. Neither but do I. But I will say that if you could fucking like, I, no exaggeration, and I bet uh, all of you guys who have kids here say this too. If you could offer me, me a <laughs> well, if you could offer me a hundred billion dollars, or fucking be present in my kid's life, it's not even a thought. It's not even a fucking thought. I'd I'd take I'd take thirty G's a year over fucking a hundred billion dollars. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you take the money. <laughs> well, I'm saying you know, like I mean, I, but you know what I mean. So like, I'd take thirty G's really a year is... and not be in my kid's life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I do like, want to so say what what is really power? What is re you know like what does that really mean to you? What does wealth really mean to you? And so I'm not against any of that shit, but all of that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. What we're talking about is like the evil of fucking the state and the beauty of liberty, and that's fine if you don't want to talk about that shit anymore. Then fine, don't. But just like beat it. Well, Leave let, me, let me alone. Let me say let me say real quick too that you know. I, I essentially live the lifestyle that Matt and uh, Jason espouse. You know, I'm a successful entrepreneur that became financially free at a young enough age that I'm now able to migrate to freer places. And that's that's fine advice, but it ultimately hasn't changed the fact that I'm being labeled a terrorist because I speak out about the government online. So yep. it doesn't matter. You know, like maybe I'll be able to hire a better attorney Dude. when they come after me. 
But Clint, it doesn't, just, you know? Clint, okay. just make more money and you'll be fine. <laughs> dude, <laughs> like, the thing you'll, about dude the... you'll, be, you'll be fine just like McAfee was. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you'll exactly. be fine. Just, the you thing about the money. make more money thing, and I see Daniel said something about it in the chat. Daniel W., it's a little bit farther up, is he said, you don't think taxation is theft, you just want more money. That's what he said. Uh, in that thing and I could be misquoting and Daniel could be misquoting there but I do remember the point being like I remember thinking he it did not seem like the point he was making was having more money helps you fight the state until other people said that and kind of assumed that's what he meant and then he said yeah that's what I mean having more money makes it easier to fight for liberty do you think someone well, who's homeless could fight for liberty better than someone who's rich I don't no, think that's, of course I don't not. think that was his original point I, no, I just well, think he glommed onto it here's what happens right with these guys and those they'll, they'll do this shit a lot and don't get me wrong because I do this shit too like if you listen to, to my show I do this all the time where I'll go listen I want to make my argument but I'm gonna set it up first with like five minutes of like, here's what I think the narrative is and the bigger picture is, and here's where my argument makes sense, right? Like I do that all the time. I'm not against doing that. But if you'll see that uh, there's that YouTube uh, page, uh, part of the problem clips, and then there's like a bunch of other people who put out little clips of mine, and they'll just put out the argument, like literally two minutes. And even in those two minutes, I think it always comes across as like pretty clear what my argument is, even without the, the whole setup, right? But what those guys do is they have this whole setup, which is all about them telling these grand stories. But the stories are always like, listen, you've read three books and I've read the same three books. I know what you're talking about. And this is not the like totality of the universe. It's just you're really interested in these books right now and that's fine. But when you just clip the argument, and you'll see that just put out there. The argument is like so astoundingly weak that people are like, holy shit. Is your argument actually that you don't hate taxation? You just hate that you don't have more money? Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I make really good money. Like I'm, I'm doing very good for myself. That's not my problem. I mean, sure, I don't like paying the government all that money, it's but that's not at all my problem. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but no, what, what, I, what I hate about it is that, like, I mean, primarily what they do with the money, you know, like, that's really it. The fact that I'm funding, like, I am actively every year writing a check to fund genocide and, like, incarceration for bullshit, for gun you know, possession charges or drug possession or, or dealing charges. I mean, that like drives me crazy or to bail out big corporations. That's what fucking bothers You're me. You're also about funding it. The, the enforcers of your own lockdown over the past year. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty right. fucking fun. So, so all of that is what bothers me. It's not that I don't have more. I have more than any, like if you went back in my family's history to all the way to the beginning, I have more than any of them. It's not the problem isn't that I don't have more or like it, it, it's that what the money is being used to do. And then also the fact that the fucking income tax like destroys people like just yeah. you ever hear Scott Horton tell that thing that I love so much. But he's like, could you just imagine if like some foreign power invaded and imposed the income tax on us? Like if they invaded and just went, OK, everyone now, like we didn't have an income tax and then Russia invaded, took over our government and they were like, OK, everyone now you live under the IRS, you know, the, the USS IRS system and <laughs> everybody now there is a fee for production and your Fifth Amendment rights are gone because you you have to incriminate yourself <laughs> and then fucking. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you, Drew. I love you, buddy. Get in the basement and fucking write some more shit. Oh, that was Drew. Right. Top Lobster. Sorry. All right, Drew. Drew's the man, by the way. Makes great videos. Love that guy. Turn anyway, 21. Actually, if someone, if someone imposed the income tax on us, you'd be like, this is the most insane shit ever. We'd, we'd be ready to die over this shit, but it's our own government who does it, so we just accept well, it. But, uh, but, so it, that's but all. is it? I mean, it, we, we, the, the name of the invader was... Uh, F E D and they landed in nineteen thirteen on our shores. So Yes. Well now you're going back to some Jew stuff. But the point yeah. is <laughs> I, don't, I don't think all of us can take the blame for what a few bad apples did. Now I have, I have, I have to make the cop defense. You go, it's a few bad apples. All right. <laughs> us. But anyway, the fucking so the point is like that that's my thing with those guys. And and by the way, if anyone I am I am so willing to take on any argument. But if anyone, yourself included, 
Jose Galison, <laughs> if that is your Mexican French name. <laughs> you can tell me what the argument is. Just tell me what the argument is. And I will, I will gladly respond to that argument. But just ask yourself, is it actually an argument? Or is it just an assertion? Or is it just a fake fucking profit? You know, like this is what's gonna happen in the future? Because I don't know. I, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed what the fucking actual argument. Forget uh, uh, Vin Chesarian. What does <laughs> fucking, what does Matt have to say? What is his argument against yeah. what we're doing? No, you brought up, like you legit elaborate on a lot of shit I said. Like I said on Josh Smith's podcast, Break the Cycle, exactly what I said. They speak, they speak in profundities or profundities. I forget how it's pronounced. But basically they say shit that sounds really deep and then you really uh, like analyze it and you're like, it's not that deep. And I actually do think they have decent arguments. But I think they do them themselves a dis what are disservice. They? I think they. But do I'm just saying, what are they? Such a I mean, can, can can I say? Go ahead. Sure, please. Since I, yeah, because uh, I think that their primary argument is that that following the Mises Caucus path, the political path, will be ultimately a waste of energy, and that and that we shouldn't be using it. Um, and that ultimately you are endangering your followers. Now, I think that's that's an assertion. I don't, and I think that's like right. Some but that's my of, point. That's just an assertion. No, I know. Like, I know. Why? But I think, I think, why? I think that there there is a fair there is a fair argument about tactics as to whether or not we should be. I mean, this is the agorist argument. It's like, do you want to use the political but, realm but at all? Do you guys understand right. that I've been asking now for fifteen minutes? What is their argument? And no one's been able to give me anything. Like, now I'm not saying that that isn't an assertion that this is a bad tactic. I'm saying, what is the argument? Okay. Why, is, why, is, why, why is that a bad, yeah. why is that a bad tactic? I understand. Why? Right. Please, no, I'm I, like, I'm not even saying it like facetious, like why? With, with, I will with, try without, to without, an assertion, without an assertion, I can't answer that. I don't know. I, I, I really can't. You, t you tell me. Someone tell me. Because the LP is, is literally gay would probably be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not from, I'm, by the way, tell you, Nick. My king, Nick, that is an assertion, but it's is a pretty assertion. good assertion. <laughs> it's the most sound assertion I've heard so far. I mean, my, my biggest thing, though, I, I just really, my biggest thing that I've said multiple times, and I'll admit that when we're talking oh. about tactics, it really is just a matter of like, I try my best to come from a spot of not That's not certitude. me, right? That's you guys? What's up? What? What? What's going on? We you got some weird audio anything. shit? Was that me or you guys? I don't know. I lost I've, you for I've, a second. What? You're so uh, here? Fire? What's going on? Been. Okay, now I hear you. What were you saying? Okay. Your uh, biggest thing is what? I, and, and I want to it's preface dick. this. I always try to come from a spot <laughs> of like, like being like I don't. I'm not coming from a spot of certitude. I just think that there's a certain way reason why the LP is the way it is, and it's probably just going to revert back to the way it was in the end. And so I, I just I kind of think it's a fool's errand, and I might be wrong. I, I genuinely always try to come to the spot. I, I could be fucking wrong, but I think tactically speaking, I, there are better ways to engage. And but I don't fucking know. What, what, what I, do hey, I Dave, know? I, you know? I, I do have a I do have an interesting question for you because, uh, you know, Sarwak has has asserted that that ultimately he's handing the keys to people that ultimately don't know how to drive. Or in my opinion, I think it's more likely and I and I have actually been disappointed by this is that as the Mises caucus appears to have taken, you know, the steering wheel mm -hmm. um, or it's en route to happening that I have seen many people that I thought were in your camp kind of fall to the wayside do you think this is this is a product of people that simply want to bitch and that don't want to actually have any um any work to be done or what do you think yeah. about that um so okay first of all sarwak didn't hand the keys to anyone we fucking <laughs> True. took that shit yeah, that's um, right. all right he that's lost the fuck, i mean that's just the reality of it it's not yeah. like he went hey you guys take a shot we we fucking yanked them shits from them and fucking they're ours now. And yeah, you know, we're we're in, if you look at, I mean, you could look at all these little like details or, or people who have said this or that. If you look at the bigger picture and what we're in the middle of doing, we are fucking doing this. Okay. I mean, like everything that I said was gonna happen with this party is happening to a way that couldn't have been more fucking, you know, yeah he, he didn't <laughs> yeah. he didn't get it oh god uh, but that's but but i mean could it have been more accurate 
what I told you guys was going to happen with this fucking party. So now that it's fucking happening and we're taking it over and all this shit, now people are going to start like going like, well, I don't know if this is the route or start bitching or going in different directions. Like, okay, there's going to be some of that. But the Mises Caucus, as of right now, I believe is dominant in 51 states. I, or uh, in 26. <laughs> 51. <laughs> Wait, you old 26. Wait, 51. 51 states. I guess, sorry, I've been doing a lot get of math. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, today. <laughs> 20, 26 states. DC, are you in a state? What the fuck? So 51%. Oh, the that's where the states. 51 came from. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Despite making states. up 13% of the LPD, <laughs> yeah. the Mises Caucus has taken over 51% of the states. <laughs> there you go. There you on, go. On, it's actually, this is so, Nick. This, so this is an it's, excellent. It's, we're, oh. I mean, like, we're really, like, uh, on the verge of taking this shit over and, and really making this into, like, what we want it to be. And I think, and I'll tell you, and I've talked to a lot of people, like, within the Mises Caucus who know that, look, you guys all see what's happening here. How many of the fucking the loser brigade are quitting? The rest of them Do are gonna fucking this? quit. <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> I, I actually just joined. Dave, David, this is actually just a campaign promise. It's like I will get us Israel. I will. The promise land is coming. And they'll back be a good. Too. And they'll be a good state. They'll play their part. Sure, like to, there'll like be a get... disproportionate <laughs> domination on the rest of the state. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah you they're said like, it, sure. You said it, not me. Sure, they're like 2% of the population and like 80% of the... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but He said but it, not I can, I can say it. That's right. Because I have I know. a Jewish you have the right hook. behind me. Because oh. you're black. Uh, that's right. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Blackest member of this show besides Nick. I, uh, and me. <laughs> but so look the the amount of fucking those people that have quit already believe me they're they're quitting early those are the smart ones who are quitting by now the rest of them are all gonna fucking quit and bail out of the way like the real awful ones and then the rest are gonna fall in line i i could already tell you that a whole bunch of uh of people in the mises caucus are telling me that everyone else in the party is coming around and kind of being like Hey, so like I know we were against you before, but like when you guys win, like we're all cool, right? But because they all <laughs> see the writing on the wall. Fucking uh, uh, Nick Gillespie, uh, who I just did his his show that was he told me he'd vote for me. Like he's fucking he's on board. And after the show was done, he was like, "Look, you know I know we're in like these different camps, but we should all get along and blah blah blah." Like all these people are coming to the table now because they realize what's going on the same way they did during the Ron Paul movement. I don't know if you guys ever saw uh, when that Elizabeth Nolan Brown uh, lady, who I just like saw this this weekend at Freedom Fest. She was cool to my face, but she'd block me on Twitter and stuff. But she was like, oh, the Ron Paul movement brought in all these racists and blah, blah, blah. And then people yeah. were sending her her old tweets in 2012 <laughs> where she was like, the Ron Paul revolution is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Because when it was going on, she didn't want to fucking call it out because that was the energy in the room. So what's going to happen is when we become the energy, everyone's going to fucking fall in line. That's like, or they'll bail and that's fine. That's just as good. But like, that's what's going to happen is that I do it. We, we're going to be the force and everybody else can either fucking bail or, and they don't even, you could be a fucking agorist. You don't have to fucking vote. You don't have to join the fucking party, but you'll at least be the same way you were in the Ron Paul days. At least go, yep, that guy's right about all that fucking shit and let other people know that because that's really all this is about. That's all it's yeah. about. Is fucking do, letting people know what really is up, and it's that yep. liberty shit. I do mm -hmm. think there's a fair argument to be had that that you are bigger than the LP, and and why why do you need this political vehicle? Because obviously you're going to be able to get on the biggest platforms. Do you think? I mean, without it. So do you think that that there is value in it? That is there yeah. some sort of like professional veneer that is bestowed upon you because you're no longer just a comedian but you're a political figure what do you think well i don't think it's even a political figure necessarily but obviously right like by the Misesian uh deduction i think it's worth it or i wouldn't be doing it right clearly so, yeah. yeah yeah so and, I, and you, i'm happy you you're doing it. i'm just i've heard people ask that no so i i i think it's a reasonable question but you tell me this and like honestly you all you guys tell me this do you think it's like uh, obviously, there's a certain amount of value in me going on Rogan or Tim Pool or whatever Fox News show it is or whatever fucking, you know, 
show it might be. There's value in that, and I can talk. Should I talk? Do you think there's more value in me going on as the Libertarian Party presidential nominee for, like, President of the United States, getting the endorsement of Joe Rogan and Tim Pool and Dave Rubin and fucking Kennedy and, like, all these people? Do you think that might get a little bit more buzz going than just a guy on the show? So, like, I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying it's a given that I get all of those fucking endorsements. I mean, like, some of them have already said they're fucking endorsing me, but... Do you not think that's like more valuable towards Mm -hmm. spreading the message? Because that's all this is. And I've I've maintained this from the beginning, which is what's so stupid about what those two guys were saying that I've maintained from the very beginning. All I'm fucking selling here is a speaking tour. And by the way, I'd really rather not do it. I wish there was someone else who could fucking just do it and do it better or as good. I would love to fucking back out. But you tell me who the guy is. You tell me who else is going to fucking do it on on that level, and then I'll support that fucking person. But I'll so I think you. I think to ask the question answers the question. Of course, it it would be more fucking valuable to to be the guy who's like, oh yeah, we actually now have to compare this guy's values to these other guys, and that's unfortunately the way Americans fucking look at politics. I, I mean, there is a morbidly obese man that has that shares your name that could probably take your place if you want. To. <laughs> hey man, I'm already in the LP also too. Dude, so. I, I'm presence. dead serious. If you want to do it, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I'm too scared of getting that uh, that reptile c- coming into my re- getting replaced with a reptile before. <laughs> yeah, that was, that I was sometime. gonna ask that. I was gonna ask that. At it's what like, point do you think they replace you with a lizard person? When you get, when you get over five percent, you, get? you become at, a lizard. At what point, Jose? <laughs> like how far do you think you have to get before they swap you out with a lizard person? Maybe it's already happened. I think Dave. I think you gotta like fucking. I think you gotta walk that fine line, right? Like I think I think basically there's like a line where you're considered a threat, and like they'll really come after you, and we want to walk right up to that line and then bail. <laughs> and then walk right up to the line again and then bail and then right up to the line but that's it i think that's it but not step over the line not i think that's like what a lot of people got to realize well, it's the first time that you won't step over the line <laughs> well it's a different it's a different line it's yeah. a different that's true that's line, true you know you want to be a it's fucking a whole... lizard person <laughs> no, i really don't they, I, I don't uh, even get to be a lizard person. I'm just trapped in some lizard body somewhere <laughs> while a lizard person comes home and has sex with my wife or whatever. You, know, I don't <laughs> want to you, you get to live Nick Sarwak's yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. That's what Davis. somewhere there's a guy Nick Sarwak tra- trapped in a lizard person who's like, I'm a really good dude. Like, come on. <laughs> and I just Davis, walk into his hotel piss. every night and bang his wife. <laughs> I, I think Nick Sarwak just pays somebody to bang his wife and let him watch. Please How do you think don't. I retired so young? <laughs> Everybody's asking, the chat. Everybody's asking in the chat, is squirt piss? Even that, that's another psychological one who I do not understand, man. Like, why do you want to? You know, I saw him uh, at Freedom Fest, like at a couple different things. And I saw he was at my comedy, at your comedy show. show. Yeah. And yeah. It just, you just, I just like see him there. I'm like, what are you doing here, man? Like, what do you, why are you here? Why are you at both. my show? <laughs> yeah, he's like, just he's just like Archie, I would never like... go to your show, you know what I mean? Like why are you at my show? And and then the weird thing is that it's almost like with all these guys, like you guys could just stop. It would be fine. You could just stop and none of us would ever care again. Like we or you could just stop and literally like say one thing like, "Ah, I shouldn't have done that." And we'd all be cool. Like it doesn't fucking matter. Why do you want to be this person? That's the thing with like uh, that that um, what's his name uh, Hudak guy like yeah. who is I will say Nick on the show you were at there right amongst them he's the smartest he's got to be <laughs> like amongst that group he's a Rhodes scholar compared to the <laughs> so funny, I mean, so funny piece the no he was the smart enough brigade. not to <laughs> like, he was smart enough not to open his fucking mouth the whole time I'll tell <laughs> well, you that he didn't, he didn't say much but he yeah. has so I don't think necessarily he's like stupid i mean he's not like impressive like he's not like a oh this guy's got a real mind or something but he's not like an idiot like he's you know in the middle somewhere of the you know the bell curve but he has this personality thing where what he when he got hurt which basically is what happened by the way is the whole story with them is that he got real hurt because i i brought him on my show and it was the biggest thing he's ever been on in his life or ever will be on. And he didn't do good. 
Wait, and then Hudak? everybody. Yeah, he was yeah. on part of the problem. Yeah, I was gonna say, Dave, you're associating with those people. What's wrong with you? Well, that's but that's what happened. <laughs> Literally, that is the association I feel the most guilty about is Hudak and Archie. <laughs> I mean, care less. I'll have I Fuentes, didn't know that. I'll have wow. Fuentes on yeah. again tomorrow. It, it I fucking uh -oh. regret having those those guys on. Um, but so he was talking a lot of shit about me, and um, it was because I called Stefan Molyneux the great Stefan Molyneux, and then uh, Heiss and I believe Josh Smith both recommended him they were like no he's a decent guy like have him on the show and just like RJ, we had him on the show and it wasn't like hostile like i i just had him on and he just didn't do good he just did he did a really bad job like he was he tried to argue that i shouldn't have called stefan molyneux great and i was like well here's why i think he is kind of great like he's done more than you know you guys will ever do you know i mean i didn't say it like that but to this day, their criticism is always like, well, look who Dave's attracting to the liberty movement. And it's like, well, you guys are attracting Dude, no one. No one. So, <laughs> like, what? Like, that, where do you, wh well, what, but, it, like, I, what do you have to criticize anyone else for attracting anyone to the liberty movement when you attract no one? Literally, I still don't understand, like, I still understand why they, like, they'll attack Stefan Molyneux, Lou Rockwell. I still can't yeah. get why. Like it, it doesn't it Why? doesn't make sense he to me. Wrote, because he, he rightfully wrote, said that black people Ducks don't play article? hockey. He, he hated Mighty Ducks too, man. What the hell? <laughs> well, listen. By the way, I fucking I haven't even like fucking read the Mighty Ducks article, but it's so funny when they think they're fucking like criticizing Lou Rockwell. By the way, who has fucking forty years of writing the most impressive fucking libertarian shit that's ever been written, and right. started the Mises Institute which has kept the ideas of Mises and Rothbard and Hoppe alive, unlike any, like, the, literally, just a hero, an undeniable hero in the liberty world. Like, if you call yourself an ANCAP and don't have respect for fucking Lou Rockwell, who kept Murray Rothbard, the guy who coined the term ANCAP, his ideas alive. You don't have like a little bit of respect for that guy. You're just a fucking punk ingrate. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you're you're literally, yeah. I mean, Hudak, that guy even said when he came on my show that he identified as a Rothbardian. So you identify as a Rothbardian or a, he called himself like an old Rothbardian or something. Like, okay, but still, who kept all of their writing alive? Fucking Rockwell did, right? Yep. And you're telling me that he wrote one article in the 90s that was about the Mighty Ducks, which I, I really, I haven't read that, but I've you read really so many of them. It's, 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 it's just it really an old is. man, it's just an old mean, man complaining. It's all it is. That's well, all what it is, is, is. What is it his, just, well, hold on, I'll go thing. even a step beyond that. Is his complaint that they were pushing fucking women in sports and no, minorities? No, it was minorities. Yeah, no, it, yeah, minorities. It was minorities. Diversity. They were saying, it was a diversity hockey, thing. which is fair. In hockey, they were, they were like, <laughs> there's no Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Basically. So yeah, you're basically. telling me that essentially Lou Rockwell in the 90s was complaining about the trend of wokeism? You're, yes. you're telling me that he was 30 years ahead of the curve? Yes. yes, that's yes. what you're telling me is his great like like failing <laughs> that he curve? fucking the, the... nailed it that <laughs> he curve? fucking nailed it 30 years before this was a thing that he was like you know what they're really trying to push some anti-white shit and cram like this fucking weird equality hey, into hey, everything hey, dave if you're not following ace arcus you need to follow him he's one of the best guys on twitter that you will ever find i swear to god also follow one of the most him. autistic at, at ace underscore arcus do totally it. not a huge. I don't setup. need to do shit, man. <laughs> you do. I, I demanded of you. I am no so longer. Even, but even, I am no longer way, an ANCAP. I'm a monarchist, maybe, and you are all my subjects. <laughs> that is true, and I am. I am one of them. But uh, <laughs> but if you're like okay, maybe there's some shit in that article that I don't fucking agree with. I don't. Know. Yeah, I thought it was but, silly. It was kind of silly. It, but that's just kind of a complaint about that there was a lot of minorities in a fucking in a hockey team in canada i think right and so the bad guys were white that's what it was yes. the bad yeah. guys were white and the good protagonist team was a bunch of minorities the right. fact of the matter is you know what i might i might agree with them i don't yeah, know I I'd, I'd, I'd have to I, i'd have to Black go back people and, don't play hockey honestly though i don't fucking care <laughs> Like, yeah. like, read fucking, I don't know, like, read, uh, uh, fucking against the state. Mein Kampf. Oh, Le sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, read, read against the state and anarcho-capitalist manifesto. Tell me what problem you have with that fucking book. Tell me what any of those guys have fucking contributed that is a fraction to what that is. 
So you know, I don't, I don't care. Like, I, I don't care if someone wrote one. That's fucking true, by book, the way, like, Lobster. Yeah. Malice record. put uh, Ace's quote is the Constitution is a gun-free zone signed for conservatives. Malice put that in the anarchist handbook and didn't give credit. It's oh. IP violation right there. But but it was a I courtesy mean, thing. If Ace didn't want to have his his name in there, maybe Malice didn't want to put a Twitter handle just because it doesn't look professional. Anyways, yeah, we should ask. Yeah, uh, we let, me, let me just say, let me say, <laughs> I'm not sitting here today if not for Lou Rockwell. My dad put me on Lou Rockwell in like the early '90s, and and that shit totally changed my life. So Dude, uh, yeah. no, so I, I anyway, so all well, well, just to get back to like the whole thing, like so. What fucking anyway? Malice had permission. Like, he says, "Okay, good." Well, there you go. That's that's good. Uh, Thank but you so, for clarifying. So the whole Ace. thing was right, right? Like I had that dude on my fucking podcast, and he just did a really bad job. It just didn't go good. And, and so he was. Here. Yeah, maybe he was. I don't remember. <laughs> but so he was in the Mises Caucus at the time, and everyone was trashing him in the Mises Caucus. Like they were like, "Dude, that was your big opportunity, and you fucking blew it." And you, you know, like fucking, it, it was just awful. And he just, he had nothing. Like we argued about immigration for a little bit. And just like Nick, when you were on the show, like they are, they have nothing. They, they haven't read anything. They don't understand anything. And he's the smarter version of those guys. And he had nothing. <laughs> and so everyone was fucking shitting on him. And I, I posted to call them off. I was like, guys, stop shitting on him. He had the balls to come on. Like, whatever. We're cool. It's not a problem. And then fucking he uh, he he left and he claimed it was like like he claimed some bullshit. Uh, yeah, that, I get it. I get what you did. It was bad. By the way, it was one of those episodes where I just rolled the dice and I was like, eh, I don't know. Heist and Josh Smith said he's cool. So I'll have him on. I didn't usually have people on who I've never like heard of or, or watched on some thing before. And he was really bad. And, you know, whatever. That was it. It was an episode that wasn't good. And uh, then afterward, people were shitting on him. And then he, like, picked a thing. Like, one other guy said, I think some guy posted, like, Europe is for Europeans. And he was like, that's it. That's my line. I'm leaving the caucus. But it was, like, two days after all that shit went down. Like, it was obvious. It wasn't about this. It was about everyone <laughs> thinking you suck, you know? And so he fucked. And then he left and then just went on the war path, uh, like, against me. And all of the complaints are always just so fucking lame. Like, literally, to this day, what they have is that I podcasted with three people they don't like, and I was too nice to them. That's the argument to this day. Like, it, it's, it's just, it's all so fucking ridiculous. And anyway, so he reverted. It's not even that he's so dumb. He's not, you know, impressive or anything. But the thing is that he's got a personality Thing that's very weird that he reverted to let me be like the hall monitor <laughs> like he he really has like a thing in him like he was that guy as a kid and he is that guy now that he's like i'm gonna be the fucking hall monitor who takes notes and will report back to the teacher what everyone did wrong while they were in the hall except that the teacher like in this case doesn't care the teacher is the fence like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's the, it, the teacher is the liberty same, movement, and none of them care. He's like, got the same he, energy as Jake Flores. Yes, like he's <laughs> literally coming is. back, but he's 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 like a guy who's offended by Y'all need to watch edgy Legion comics. of Skanks. Jesus, you should you should check it out. The, the last bit I watched was the right. one with the the prostitute for retarded people. That was pretty pretty classic. Wait, we're <laughs> we're ripping off that, Legion of Skanks. That and wasn't you a bit. Watch it. That was that was that was <laughs> a real thing. <laughs> but imagine right, like imagine keeping notes of what everyone every kid did in the hall. You know, and you're like, well, I came back. And at 4.15, this guy said bitch. And at 6.15, this guy cut in line and blah, blah. And then the teacher doesn't care. Like, the teacher's like, I don't care. None of this means anything <laughs> to me. And you just keep going with your notes and notes and notes. And that's what these guys are doing. It's, like, very weird. It's very odd behavior. Hey, boot that just cat from the chat, please. I have no idea how. One of you, you guys don't know how. Jesus Christ. What do you uh, say? <laughs> oh God. Niggers and faggots need to die. He's just spamming the he's just spamming the chat with it. Dave, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Guys, 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 guys. Let's hear him out. Yeah. It, 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 might, hey, it might be a fellow traveler. You never know. <laughs> Anybody who's like where where are you go? Uh, that's that's you an know? assertion, but he may have an argument behind it. I don't know. Hey man, he's he's just he's just a new Rothbardian, man. He's a David Duke Rothbardian. 
<laughs> David Duke. Hey, Toad, I know you have questions, brother. You better fire. Yeah, we gotta. We gotta... Yeah. We, Dave oh, yeah, took command of this here. fucking episode. We had we had all sorts of plans and they went to hell. <laughs> but I'm cool with it. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, what's like what happens whenever on the fucking Now we got all kind of people spamming it in the chat. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh god. We could, we could fucking we could go a little bit long. What do you guys what do you guys got? I'm trying to deal with I'm it. Fine. All right, I have I have a, Dave, I have a uh, oh, go ahead, go oh go ahead. Oh well I just it's mine mine's kind of long. It it it's it's it, I have uh, I've been speaking with some Hoppians and uh, the founder of Hoppian.org, Jared, wanted me to ask you uh, if you're prepared to deal with. I know you're big on reaching out to like left libertarians who are solid on issues like anti-war and whatnot and civil liberties about drugs and all that. You know, we we reach out to people who are good on particular issues. That's what we do. Um, but his, he, his point and a lot of the Hoppians that I speak to, their point is the left always subverts. And it happened to Rothbard multiple times. So are you prepared to deal with, like, alliances with lefties going sour if they choose to subvert as leftists are known to do? Mm. Yeah, Because that's sure. a big criticism they have of you, by the way. That's just... that's. A... Well, what? but what exactly is the criticism that I will, like, fucking... Like, what alliances do you mean by that? Like, to me, I always look at it, and, and Hoppe himself, who, by the way, is the best Hoppian, is Hans Hermann Hoppe. <laughs> Uh, like it, it, like uh, he he by was definition. nothing but uh, yeah but but no not by definition because some people could be a little bit better than their their original guy you know Fair. like um but like he was nothing Rothbard. he was nothing but supportive of uh, Ron Paul and Ron Paul's thing was always like yeah coalition on any issue that you agree with them on and and that's that and then keep like telling the truth as you see it so that's all I'm doing. And, like, I don't know exactly what you mean by alliances. Like, look, I'm not fucking retarded. I know, like, what I'm dealing with when I deal yeah. with people to the left of me and, and on these issues. But I also hope that people see that, like, there's, there's like, a real, like, there's a strategy to what I'm fucking doing here. And of at course. least I hope, I hope you would see that by the results already in the Libertarian Party and just by the results in, like, my fucking, you know, career... That it's like I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not saying I'm like the the fucking expert on all this shit, but I know what I'm fucking doing. And when I reach out and even like the the liberty unity stuff and like all of that, like I know what I'm fucking doing. And it's not that I don't mean it. It's not like like I don't. I'm I'm happy to work with Justin Amash or Spike Cohen or like any of them. I like those guys. And when I first reached out to like Reed Coverdale and all those guys and was like, hey, let's do this Liberty Unity thing, I I I really did want to work with them. I didn't say anything I don't believe, but I also knew what was gonna fucking happen. I knew that like if I did it this way, that they would see who was who. And that, that I would be the guy who's like, sure, let's all fucking work together. And then the fucking loser brigade would be flailing like, no, he's a Nazi. And they would be like, oh, wow. Yeah. You'd like, be the nice guy in the situation. He's the reasonable yeah. guy. Yeah, and yeah, they're the fucking you. retards. And like, so, so that's what <laughs> I know. And I'll say, I don't fucking look, man, like I'm, I'm able for whatever reason, just the way I am, like Unless I'm fucking oh, able Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> bring, back, I see, bring back Nick's dad. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably sleeping, you guys. Uh, but, but I'm able, I'm the guy who's able to go on fucking Reason, you know, Reason's podcast and like all these other fucking shows and go on Kennedy and go on all these things. And I still never fucking back down from what I am. Like I said in the fucking debate with Nick Sarwak, at one point he goes, you know, Hoppe is a bridge too far. And I said, Hans Hermann Hoppe is a fucking hero. And I stand by that. Like, if you believe in liberty, that guy is a fucking hero. And I don't, so any, you know, by the way, I'm, I'm a fucking, like, real belief. I think argumentation ethics is, like, the most brilliant shit I've ever heard in my life. And I've done, like, three whole episodes on that, just on the fucking philosophy of it. So I'm not, like, Hoppians... Shut the fuck up and get on board with me. I'm your guy. <laughs> yeah. let, let, me, let me also say that uh, I agree with P. Quinones on this, that, that there are people that are living in Ancapistan in their head. And, and oftentimes when people say like, oh, you can't ally with an Ancom. Well, that's not – I, I do want to say, by the way, Clint, that's not, that's not what – these Hoppians are criticisms. Of, well, that's a different they, thing. They, they criticize that shit too. Just to like, I don't want okay, any of okay. my buddies. Yeah, yeah, I don't want any of my buddies thinking I'm then, then throwing I'm them under the bus. I'm not addressing them. I'm yeah, saying to I other you. people, I've got this this critique where they're like, well, if you if you ally or if you uh, have a coalition with an ANCOM, they'll shoot you in the back. As if we're gonna actually get to anarchism in our lifetime. Like tomorrow, and that's yeah. really a concern. Like, come on, <laughs> man. Like, 
where where are we you know and and also just to say that like fucking right yeah you're absolutely right about that and i fucking love pete man like he's just that's that's my fucking brother and i don't fucking yep. care like that's you I know i thought we you were have... jewish not hispanic <laughs> by the way Dave, Dave, pete, and I, pete and i talked it out today we're good that's my it's my brother i mean you know i'm saying like, my, my people my lesser brother, but still. But, you know, uh, but like I, you know, my thing is like I think I think he is right about that. Like to not live in Ancapistan mm -hmm. in your head, and and listen to the way Hoppe talks about Rothbard, you know, and like he, he's like Rothbard was just a genius, like genius level fucking, and he was really like that. He was that dude, you know, and. I remember these stories about Rothbard, like meeting these fucking ANCOMs and they were like, oh, you guys are going to debate. And then they just fucking agreed for like 45 minutes. Like, I don't know. Yeah, of course. Obviously, if we ever got to the point of anarchy, like, yeah, we'd have some real problems with the ANCOMs. But I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like Clinton said, that's fucking that's we, a we whole different. We should be so you know, lucky as yeah, to get exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the fucking, with the whole unity shit, though, my, my thing I've said from the beginning is, like, it's the Frederick Douglass quote, quote where I'll, I'll unite with anyone to do right and no one to do wrong. And it's, I mean, yeah. people, like, make way I too much of say unity is fake and gay. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. But no, it's, like, it's just so silly, because it's, like, I, I, if you're saying alliance, and by alliance you mean that, hey, when they're doing dumb shit, I'll just shut the fuck up then no not cool but yes, like if you're exactly i mean it really is as simple as like i like what you're doing i like what he's doing and then when he does something stupid i don't like what they're doing and it's really that fucking simple people make it way more yes. complicated than it needs to be it's fucking well, yeah no at, I, I completely with agree with you yeah. yes but yeah and 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 right and uh, right ron paul with kucinich is a great example but there's like even better examples where you know like what it all started with was uh jeremy todd who i love i know you guys fucking have had on uh too is that when yeah. he said he was like do you consider uh justin amash and spike cohen your enemies and i was like no, no of course not like they're not my enemies i you know i disagree with them about some shit and i won't bite my tongue about that when i do but like no like those guys are you know more or less on my side and i agree with them like 80 percent of the time at least probably spike like 90 percent of the time and, and amash like 80 percent of the time but you know that's that's enough so I'm not like I, I don't know. <laughs> if white if white women were the biggest threat to democracy, then my tagline would yeah, not really. be white women must be stopped. I wish. I, I wish. wish. They're the yes. biggest. They're the biggest white proponents women are of democracy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And listen, I don't fucking. I got nothing against white women. You know. Nope, kick them off I'm, the show. It's over. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me explain. All right. I'm married to an Italian woman, so not exactly so, white. But so black, I would, black. you know, but, you know, I'd say like there there is, you know, exceptions to all these rules. But that is, you know, it's a funny thing that they uh, there was this guy, uh, J.W. something. Fuck, I'm blanking on his name. But he actually went through and wrote an article taking apart all the quotes that people use against me and putting them in the context of what was actually said in the fucking episodes. So like, which is, it was crazy. Cause I never, I never would have spent the time to do this. And I don't even remember half these quotes. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I don't know. I do fucking like six podcasts a week. I talk for hours on mic. I don't remember what the fuck. I don't remember what I said this episode at the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Weaponized autism be like, is amazing. But, yeah, it you is. said the N word a bunch. So yeah. I have. And I'll tell you. I meant it, but the point oh, is that I'll fucking do it again. I, I, I do it you again. Said you I hate might. Jews as well. Right. But so he'd go through these things, and they'd be like, "Oh, you say?" Because sometimes I'll see the loser brigade like give me these quotes, and I'm almost like, "Ah, shit." Yeah, did, did I, I say, say that? That? Yeah, <laughs> that, does, that does sound pretty bad. But then he went through all of them, and I. So I guess when I had Christopher Cantwell on on the show, uh, he I said to him, "I go like he was talking about demographics." And how demographics are destiny and all this shit. And if we bring in the wrong demographics, the country is going to be lost. And I said to him, I go, well, look, Christopher, because he's like, he was a libertarian. JQ. Yes. J J JQ Wentworth. That's Shout what we're Travis. talking about. Travis. We need, we need the <laughs> audience to remember shit. So Travis I, I was saying to him, I go, look, man. And he was like a libertarian for a long time. So I was like, look, as you know, even when we had all of the demographics that we really like here, 
what did we have? We had the progressive era. We had fucking the income tax, the Federal Reserve, World War One, World, World War One and Two, yep. all these shits, right? So like, like, who really are we going to blame? And what they took out of that was that I said, the demographics that we like. <laughs> and they time used six, just six, the six sentence, the like the, as if I was saying, oh, that's what we wanted. When obviously, if you listen to it in context, I was making the argument against fucking demographics being the issue because i was saying look even when the demographics were all of this we still led to this all of the problems that we have today but all they ho focused on was the word we that i said that as if i'm with you so that's the type of dishonest shit that they do you know like that's it, it and that'll happen over and over again where you're like dude you're not even like even it, it, like if you tried to listen to what i say with any amount like of of like like just be a little bit charitable about it and you obviously realize that what i was arguing was the opposite of that and like yeah i don't i don't think that like i don't know <laughs> 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 that's right but that's the type of shit i'm dealing with is like that so i don't think i don't think any of that's fucking true and also i don't you know it's like white women white men too white men listen if, if you want to blame anyone fucking if you want Woodrow to blame Wilson. white women, well, who the fuck let white women have a vote? Huh? Who did it? Property. Man so makes a point. Well, yeah, fucking chalk roaches, man. A lot of women didn't even actually want it, right? Back in the day. Pro probably the not. Ones. Yeah. It's men's fault. <laughs> the shit. Ones, yeah. Sometimes if they don't want it, you still got to give it to them. You never know. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all, right, all right. Let's bring it back. First off, I, I want to say congratulations to late on the, another baby, Dave. Uh, Thank I'm, you very I'm, much. My, me and my wife have been considering having a third. We told my kids that, like, hey, if they can get along for, like, a fucking month, that maybe we'll consider it. And, like, surprisingly. How, how old are your kids? 11 and 8. So they're both girls. Oh, okay. That's, so they want okay. another kid. Right. And they're kind of getting that age, though, where we don't have a baby in the house anymore. So, like. As gay yeah. as it is, there's a part of me that has like it's baby crazy. So, <laughs> I mean, Jose I don't know if you is can actually a yet. white woman. <laughs> yeah. Dude, fucking kids do that to you. I don't know if you can relate, yeah. Dave, but I'm such a faggot now. <laughs> oh, dude. dude, I'm the biggest bitch. Dude, they destroy you. Dude, I was, when I was at Freedom Fest, I was like little moments literally in, in the green room backstage just looking at pictures of my fucking daughter <laughs> watching videos being like i miss her like it's it's unbelievable what they do to you dude and i'm so excited to have another one because i'd like my daughter's two and a half now and i'd look at like pictures of her at six months old like and literally get choked up we were like she'll never be six months old again and like yeah. now now that i got another one coming i'm like oh yes i get to go through all of that oh, again and God. it's yeah, dude, we're real queefs. I know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why kids, my tweet. Kids oh. do that to you, not man. To, not 2021 Dave that. versus 2012 Dave. Not to I want to see that. I want to see that argument happen. Dave is going to just call you a him. faggot I, the whole time. I would wreck him. <laughs> not to, Way more not well, to make well it sad. Him. Not to make it sad or, or tacky, Dave. But uh, I, I would have just got out of the military, and I fucking when I deployed, I've only deployed once. I was pretty lucky. I was in for 11 years, only deployed once. And the, the first, when I deployed, my kid was about that age, two and a half. And that was like the thing that fucked me up the most. I have a cake, I had a cake job. I was in the Air Force. It was a joke. But it was still like not being there for like four months with my fucking kids was fucking yeah. awful. But yeah, anyways, to fucking yeah. caveat into what I mean, I said congrats about the new, the new kid. Me, me and my wife are going to have another one. Now, you've been married, I'm assuming, for a little while. Uh, what to you constitutes a unit of fuck? Oh, no. He's oh, this so oh, I, I've had, it's actually funny. I've had this conversation with my wife. and like, A unit is, of fuck? What yeah, does like, that what, mean? What, it's, it's at what point ridiculous. is it sex? Yeah, when yeah, you at what point is it sex? sex? Is it penetration? Place. Is it ejaculation? This is the, this is the like, Bill Clinton it's, testimony. It depends on what the meaning of it is. Yeah, what is it? Remember in... It sounds very simple, but it has a lot of... Like things can be drawn out of what your answer is here. So, so that's interesting. Remember in uh, Seinfeld, they had this question for a while. And, yeah. And Jerry's answer. This was such. My a wife 90s just texted me and was, told me was, I don't was, belong in this conversation. Jerry's answer was uh, <laughs> when, 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 the, when the nipple no, makes an appearance. Yes. I believe when the nipple. That's right, Toad. When the nipple makes an appearance, he considered that sex. <laughs> that was '90s shit. Like they really yeah. thought sex was anything. That has to do with like the arena oh, of Wait. sex, like anything beyond kissing. 
was considered <laughs> sex to them. Wow. So I don't know. I'm uh, I'm of the millennial generation, and I I would say uh, to me like penetration, like whenever you've penetrated, that the mouth? is no. <laughs> penetration. no 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 no. Okay. No, like pen penetration of the vaginal or in Archie's case anal canal. That's that's sex to me. So there's no such thing as lesbians by this deduction, unless you have a scrap on. Ooh. No, it's no, there's no such thing as lesbian sex. There's yes. not no such thing as lesbians. <laughs> lesbians <laughs> exist. But yes, they they don't actually have sex. I, but so it does, it's not the ejaculation does it for me because I know uh, this is where no, this actually no. started. It's that's my wife, crazy, like dude. ejaculation. Wife, that's crazy. I, my yeah. wife tried telling dude. me. I put it in the and she's like, "We fucked." What are you complaining about? Like, we, I've, never made, a, I've oh, never made a. I've never made a woman come once. So. What are you talking about? That's not sex. If you're gonna say ejaculation is the problem, that means you could like fuck a chick for like forty five minutes and just not come and be like, "I never fucked that chick." That's ridiculous. If just the man coming is is the criteria, then then. I've fucked 32 times in one day before. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, it, it, that sounds if rough. It's, if it's ejaculation, then anytime I've had sex with a condom, I've actually never had sex, which is cool. <laughs> that, that takes my body count down a lot. We just made we just made Clint a virgin again. There we go. <laughs> oh no, I, I rarely use condoms, think, Dave. Come on. Yeah, let's say the fact that you think Clint uses condoms is real. <laughs> Dude, have you ever gone a long period? Have you ever gone a long period of raw dogging and then go back to condoms? It's the absolute fucking worst. Marriage yeah. like makes you like fucks oh, you yeah. up like that. I remember the long Horrific. period of time just raw or using condoms, and then I go to raw dogging because I'm married, and I'm like, <laughs> then you go back to condoms. You're like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Why did you go back to condoms? condoms? <laughs> Dude, but that's yeah. also that's why like. Uh, honestly, there's like so many reasons, but that's one of why like you just need to get married, dude. Yep, that's the fucking problem. Yeah, that's why I want everything, to dude. Getting married doesn't fix your get... finances, though. What's it? I'll, I'll it? tell you this much. No, it, it, it kind of does. Me it kind of does, dog. though, nope. dude. I was just listening to your your your, um, your comedy set at Freedom Fest where you made you were talking about. Yeah, by the just way, get married really to get married because it frees you up. They really shouldn't have posted that because that's not fucking cool, by the way. Oh, no, okay, my bad. Oh, I watched no. it today. That Dave whatever. didn't Mike, actually watch it. Mike, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but, okay, I'll, I'll shut up about it then. No, it's It fine, was really funny. You yes. did a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't <laughs> you dare <laughs> fucking <Motherfucker>. tell her. <laughs> Yo, seriously, why did you go back to condoms, Jose? You just admitted Well, sometimes she... women it's have like, birth, like going... health issues yeah, and like... have to get off birth control. Like that's It's like going back to hand jobs in the movie theater. Like, hey, I really want to go back. Let's go do this again. This are, you talking really about, wait, you, Cole, are you talking about doing the penis and the popcorn surprise? <laughs> no. I... What the fuck is this show? <laughs> this is the actual show. This is what we did in an hour and a half. Well, we did like, like, get way serious, and you guys got all fucked up when you got something different. But well, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I like, was maybe... not prepared for debates on political tactics. I was like already pre-gamed. <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying this fucking conversation. I was just thinking that maybe maybe fucking can happen between two chicks if one of them has a clit that's big enough that it can penetrate the other one's vagina. Maybe. Was it Jeremy that's, Todd that says a, a, he says a clit is a small wiener? Yeah. <laughs> or, or no, I uh, I think he said the opposite, right? That that a dick oh. is a huge clit? Isn't oh. that what he said? That's it. Yeah, this is going to be his Jesus campaign Christ. thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. These are deep philosophical questions. Nick, what do the Hoppians <laughs> think about this? <laughs> let, me, let me ask my buddy. <laughs> Dave, or Fat Dave, do you have any real questions for him? Real questions or, or like, just, or just a questions. question? Oh, my my question Brandon's, was... question. Brandon's question. Does anyone remember off the top of their head? I'm already a little toasty. It so, was, uh, uh, would, would Dave rather fight uh, 100 no, Andy? That wasn't Brandon's questions, but Oh, no. Is, it wasn't that one? No. The 100, 100 uh, Andy you, Craig size. Um, no, Brandon, Nick Sarr Brandon said waves one of skips Michael Malice's. Is what he said. Wait, what? Hold <laughs> oh, on. that's right. What would you? Okay. Uh, I didn't catch many, that question. Hold on. Are you okay, thinking of a How long fight? would you last if there was waves of six Michael Malice's and then every fifth wave was a boss of Joe, Joe Jorgensen? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. Fighting. Yeah. Fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting. Waves of six Michael Malice's. I mean. 
All right, look, I mean, to be fair, six Michael Malices could could probably fuck me up, but I will wreck four Michael Malices. <laughs> Dude, and like, I feel like any one of us would fuck up one JoJo. Wreck. Like, fuck, jo- yeah, JoJo's not going to be a problem, but the, the six Michael Malices, but it, 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 they, they will, they will get me. BDSM six, Joe Jorgensen. six Michael Malices will get me, but ooh, will there be some hurt Michael Malices right. in that process? Swap <laughs> out the Malice for a Greta to make it make more sense. Six Greta yeah, with a fucking wait, JoJo. Yeah, he really, like... I like Look, what was Toad? Toad, what was your question that you were going to ask I mean, me about I mean, the I, fight? I, well, I thought it was kind of not a difficult question to answer, but it was: Would you rather fight one hundred Andy Craig sized Nick Sarworks or one silverback gorilla sized Archie Flower? Was that what it was? Wait, a hundred. A hundred Andy Craig sized Sarworks, Sarworks which are yeah. I think this, are they the same size? They're the same size, size for yeah, sure. I have no I've idea. Never met so, I, 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 this was on Twitter, and you liked it, Nick Dave. Sarwalks so that's what you thought. Or one... Oh, yeah, okay. Obviously, one giant uh, fucking Archie Flower. And I, right, because you could just kick him in the balls giant. or something, right? He'd, fuck him up. he'd literally trip on his way running over to me. Like, I, that's, that's an easy one. <laughs> well, wait, Archie doesn't have balls, though. Yeah. He, he will let's, trip let's, and be like, Neo-Confederate. <laughs> on his way down he'd be like Fuente <laughs> but when, when did zombie Bob get in there plus the hundred Sarwaks would have CIA training so you don't want to fuck with that don't. I, don't, I don't know have you seen him try to cut down a twig <laughs> he's, he's, in, he's under deep cover oh, what I've been wanting to ask today for a while is uh, what do you love about Michael Malice <laughs> nothing <laughs> <laughs> No, I love I love that motherfucker. I don't know. You know what I love about Michael Malice is that he is uniquely himself. That's and very I think true. We should all we should all strive to be that. He doesn't he, fuck around at all. He just he's just him, and he doesn't care. He's a pure embodiment of Sterner. Yeah, he doesn't like a fucking. He doesn't pander to his fucking audience or anything like that. And the fact that he he'd probably have a hundred thousand more followers if he didn't block them all. So I fucking I respect that shit. He oh, yeah, loves the cum gutters. Yeah, Mal- Mal- Malice is cum gutters, yeah. When are you going to do a sheath ad? <laughs> me? No. no I, think he's asking Dave, me. What you, what, I was yeah. like, what? Dave already has, I thought. They fucking, right, you, they guys get other question, you guys got any other questions? We're, we're running along in the tooth here. So, uh, anybody else got I mean, we could I, always I, do the, uh, the Tower Gang tried and true of dick to ass ratio. What we asked Robbie the Fire, and he actually showed us. I feel like yeah, Dave's ass. ass. Well, not, not their ass. ass so he's got a huge a dick and a ton of ass. praise about your your junk. Is it as impressive as Luis J. Gomez's small dick that he has believes? No, nah, probably not, man. I think he's just <laughs> fucking like compared to him, it's probably that impressive, you know? But like that's uh, I think I I don't think I have that big of a dick. I think I just hang out with a lot of small dick friends. You know? like that's uh, <laughs> Are you in the liberty movement? (laughs) There you go. There you go. You said it. That's. I mean, I don't care. I'm also. I've always been skeptical as to whether or not Dave actually wears sheaths. So. Yeah. Oh, yo! I fucking wear them shits. I'm wearing them right now. Oh shit! His dick's in the pocket right now. (laughs) Hold on. Oh shit! This is what we want to do. There we go. Nice. He has has to like loop his dick around in the pouch. Yeah, like a fruit Look, by the I'm foot. not saying I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying I didn't have to make some adjustments, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's the big dick pouch sheath. <laughs> I just uh, I had to hire some Mexican dude who's like, yeah, we can take down that wall, sure, move things around, but you know, I'm staying there. No, sheath underwear are fucking awesome. There's a few sponsors I have that I'm like, no, they're like legit fucking awesome, and they're one of them. How about a percentage of how many? Uh, don't don't say any ads. Don't say any companies. But what percent of the ads you do are you like? Yeah, this product is bullshit, and I will never. <laughs> I don't actually Ooh. like it. Uh, I you know, shit. That's a good question. There there's been a couple before that I got that I was like, yo, I really don't like them. But usually then I'd read them like one time and fucking not keep them. Like if I really don't like, I I won't. You know. Okay, I'm, so you I'm won't least... sell out. I'm at least enough in, in, in enough of a position where it's like I, I'll only like fucking I make them send me the fucking product. I check it out and then I, I make sure I think there's like something to it because, you know, otherwise I just I feel real shitty about that. Um, Good. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know, so like mo- almost all the products like I mean it when I say it, 
that I fucking, oh, I think this is legit. There's been a couple of them where it's like, this wasn't really for me, but I guess they seem like a decent enough, you know, product. Um, but no, I won't, I won't just sell some shit that I really don't fucking believe in. I will. They will not be pumping Dogecoin <laughs> in. Yeah, because it's like, hey, if anybody wants to sponsor us, I don't care if it's adamandeve.com. We'll, we'll take it and we'll fucking... <laughs> that Dave has no ethics whatsoever. So we'll oh, I'll, I'll grift as the, like the best of them. <laughs> Dave, Dave I will got... keep the fat Dave Smith's title until I fucking... <laughs> I'll put it on my gravestone. He's got the, uh, su- the Summer's Eve commercials coming up next. <laughs> Oh, dude, Fat Dave in a Summer's Eve commercial would be legendary. Um, (laughs) Since Magnus was in here, I know he's been pushing the end the war stuff, so I wanted to shout them out. They're going to have a big protest later this year. Uh, This is Clint reporting live from Childerberg Studios, a.k.a. Liberty Lockdown Podcast. Everybody go around the circle. Nick, give us your plugs, please. Nick Ashley, you can find me at at Nick underscore individual on Twitter and at his individual as podcast.com. Anything I ever do will be on there. Tote. Uh at Anarcho Toad on Twitter and this podcast called the Tower Power Hour. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> Jose Galison. At Galison Jose on Twitter. I'm on fucking YouTube. I'm also everywhere audio podcasts are at. Basically, uh, No Way Jose is my podcast. I'm sp- hopefully I can have Dave on next week and we I didn't piss him off enough. Uh, he really is. <laughs> In all honesty, Dave is like I think it's super cringe having heroes, but if I'm going to have anyone, Dave really is it. He, I'm going to be talking with him hopefully about anatomy of state and he's legit who convinced me to read anatomy of state which made me an anarchist i was on the fence for forever i finally read it and that's what did it for me so it is actually been really special having dave on so it means a fucking lot even though we kind of in a disagree all right don't be gay (laughs) pull it out pull it out it's okay what are you (laughs) but uh yeah no fucking go like share subscribe all that good shit uh i really am looking forward to Having an episode, Dave, uh, like I said to, uh, already, this is kind of like in a video game. It's the end of the fucking main story. Anything else after this is fucking exploring the game. So it's kind of a big deal for me. So. <laughs> that, that, was, that was definitely a unit of fuck. Good job. Yes, uh, that was a unit of fuck. Like, <laughs> mor- mor- one, morbidly, o- one unit fuck. morbidly obese Dave. <laughs> yeah, Fat Comic Dave on Twitter. Uh, then also the Tower Power Hour. Uh, coming up, we have Adam Nutter next Monday. And then me and Toad are going to Rebel with a Cause next Tuesday. Is that right, Toad? Yeah, uh, yeah, I believe so. And then the next following, Tuesday, the following Monday, we have Shane Scalf on Tower Power. The, yep. So that's the next Shane. couple. Of, yeah, that's the next couple of ones coming up. But it's been awesome having Dave on. This has been like from the beginning. We were always oh. wondering if we can fucking annoy his ass enough to get on here <laughs> we, were shooting, we were shooting for episode four after we had maj Sheree on but we had we had to wait until 23 but that's all right right, right after right after we, we towered him that first time and he was just like don't tower me you bastards it was when i fucking i was nice to sarwalk and you guys i thought the tower thing was so funny and then these guys towered me and i was like you motherfuckers <laughs> so <you're laughs> That was a fun time. Fun time. And then, by the way, and then when you guys towered me, like I thought I was smart, and but I was so impressed with the tower thing. And then, like you guys were saying something, and I just wrote a letter, like a random letter, and then you towered around that letter, like you incorporated (laughs) that to make it a whole new thing. And I was like, these guys are good. Hey, listen, I fucking love all you guys, and I will, of course, I'll be on fucking No Way Jose, dude. What what do you fucking like? Now you made me feel weird. Like I was just fucking around. (laughs) Big time, you. I was so drunk, and you came back with serious shit i'm like what the fuck <laughs> 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 just wants you to hate i just thought more, this was so. a funny time to like come i, I fucking good, dude <laughs> i fucking love all you guys and i think what you guys are doing is fucking great and i uh i i think that you know man nick you made this point when you were on with josh and i was watching that fucking uh that stream because i was you know telling you guys you your legends for what you did on that dumb podcast <laughs> but when you said it i thought you made a point and the way you said it it was like something I thought about a lot, but I thought it was like I had never like really fucking like verbalized it or intellectualized it like in that way. We were like, you know, part of what we got to do here is all it, it is let people know that this is fun. And, and you know, so much of this shit, it's like and there's a big problem with libertarianism, right? Is that what are we inviting people to do? Like we're inviting them to be angry. Like, sometimes there'll be people who I'll meet at all these fucking events and at the shows I'm at, and they're like, dude, you made me a libertarian. And I do kind of feel like I'm sorry. 
What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Like I just I, I made you angry about the Fed when you never would have known about this shit before, or I made you fucking fear it, you know? And like what I like about shows like this is that it's like, okay, we can signal to you that we're having fun with this whole thing. Like, yeah, we are angry about all this shit and we are against all of it, but we're also like, hey, let's like have a few fucking beers and be bros and like be fucking free and and so I, I love all you guys for that. I think there's something really important and really powerful of that to let people know, like, why is it? And this is why all those loser brigade types have been nothing but a recruiting tool for for us in the Mises caucus, because yep. who do you want to be? Yep. Like, do you want to be taking notes right now about who <laughs> said the most offensive shit? Or do you want to be <laughs> laughing along with us? Yeah. Like, wh wh which no. would you rather be? And so I love what you guys are doing. I love the spirit of like, let's like, let's be the ones who are having fun. Let's be the ones who are doing something awesome. Like just that, that so much of that is, uh, I mean, obviously we have the better arguments and all of that, but why do you think it is that the Mises caucus is like, t is like just crushing it and taking over the fuck? <laughs> God damn it, Danny. <laughs> yeah, man. You were supposed Me to be cross. drawing. <laughs> uh, you just come down in the basement, and I'm like, so is the are the paintings done? And there's just come everywhere. And everywhere. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, who would you who would you rather be like with? Would you rather like if you could go hang with fucking like Nick Sarwalk and John Hudak, or you could fucking hang with like me and fucking Clint and and Malice and people like that? Like, you know. Like yeah. that's kind of the answer in itself. It's a no-brainer. Is I that mean, if you is, just we're if having you just a fucking Nick, party? Yeah, if you just watch Nick on that episode, would you rather be the base god with the fucking king hat <laughs> and, the, and the bandana, yes. or the the cat ear psychopath in the bottom left corner? Like it's an it's an well, easy well, choice. Well, Clint, Clint, you pointed it out in real life where you went to the regular LP and you were yes. like, "What the fuck is this?" And yeah. then you went across the street to the Mises yeah. Caucus and you were like, "This is way better. This is so yeah, much yeah. more fun." I was like, "These are my people," and you you can sense it. I'm telling you, go to any Mises event, you will feel it right away. Like. These yeah. are your people. This is where you're supposed to be. And and Dave, you gave us a home. So regardless of how good you feel about what we're doing, we're here because of you. So we thank you. Well, I, yeah. I appreciate that, man. And that's <laughs> that's kind of part of like the whole thing that I'm trying to push is that like, look, dude, like, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if what we're doing is going to work or like to what level it's going to work. I really don't know. This is to me, I think the best thing that we could do, you yeah. know. If I if I had a better thing, then I'd say that's the better thing we could do, um, and and maybe you know, whatever I don't know. Maybe someone else has a better thing we could do. But I'll say I think this is the best thing we could do, and let's at least have some fun along the way, and yep. and really like fucking you know hang out with some cool people and meet some cool people and let's let's fucking do it and let's let's be fucking predators <laughs> together. Uh, and and let's so be anyway. honest, yeah. whether whether we succeed or not, we're these are, in my opinion, these are friendships that'll last a lifetime. So, yeah. uh, while this, while the ship goes down, we can fucking play some gangster. We'll rap play the violins together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yes. right. Hell yeah! And I'm happy well, to fucking do any of your guys' fucking shows, and I'll, I'll be, I will be on No Way Jose, and whenever <laughs> we fucking set it up for in a, in a few days. So, well, gamer, uh, the gamer we're, we're all gonna be bonds that can't be broken. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, we're all gonna comic. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we're all going to be at Tom Woods 2000, and we yeah. wanted to do a live podcast. That's well, not... I won't, uh, That's I, like proposing at somebody there, else's wedding. You Jesus, oh, dude. damn, I really thought you were going to be there. Um, no, um, said, unless he's my, one of the surprise guests. Uh, <laughs> no, probably around yeah. the due date. My, my fucking uh, my my wife's due on October thirteenth, so I'm fucking. Oh hell, okay. no oh yeah, that's way better than that. Tom Woods. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, it's not. Like I'd love to go, but my wife's being a real dick about it. Like, <laughs> she's really just, insisting man. that I gotta be there for this whole. Vulgar What's funny is just like. You could look at the baby and then look at Tom Woods and be like, ah, oh, they're they're pretty close together looking, actually. <laughs> it's not really that different. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. But everybody thinks I look like Tom. God damn it. 
Dude, the time to bounce, though, is right after the birth. That's like the worst time. They're just a fucking potato that shits at that point. That's really it. Yeah, you can't even do anything. You can't, like, you try to help. You're like, let me do something. And then they're like, I think they want to breastfeed. So whatever. Just screaming and pooping. It doesn't even fucking smile. So just fuck it flat to Orlando. Yeah. Well, I'm Go sure ahead, anyone that's, that's watching or listening to this is already subscribed. But uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter, at Comic Dave Smith. We are part of the problem. Yes, we stand with the people. Dave showed the way, but we are unequaled. Thank you for coming on, brother. It was a, it was a blast. Follow right, Ace on Twitter, please, Dave. All right, all right, I will. Just <laughs> remind me. That's the next part of the problem episode. <laughs> <laughs> and one all day. right, later, fellas.